live from the apocalypse this is the best music discussion show to pair with late night snacks <laughs> sunflower seeds cheese <laughs> pearls combos mm. that's that's our essence um and i i am dano uh you know pleasantly still here and rewarded by it every day uh, the I will say I am joined every week by someone who is the only reason that we remain a respectable music program uh, <laughs> like not only does he bring the charisma right not only does he bring the the insight but he brings that NPR tiny desk audience member energy uh, that we need. So I appreciate you, Kay. Thank you for being here every week. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, uh, and and this is the year, and we're talking about the best twenty-five albums in music twenty twenty-three, according to me. And we had to bring in someone. It's hard to make a perfect song. Our guest has done it. Has what? done it. I'm telling you. Well, thank you very much. Put Need Love 2 on in the car today. And mm -hmm. I was ranting at my wife about it. Uh, you, know, <laughs> like, you know how this is a year where everyone's doing dance rap songs? She was cranking the BPMs to delicious hooks before any of that was going on. Yeah, anyway. Uh, that's I'm going to rant about hip hop when I'm really, when I'm, I'm going to be the old person ranting about hip hop. Oh, God. Yes. Same. Yeah. Same. So, mm -hmm. Thank you, Psalm, for one, for being here. Um, I appreciate you. Well, thank you for these kind words. Uh, you know, I used to chase perfection erroneously. Right. And, you know, now, but I appreciate uh, that you think that a perfect song in my catalog exists. It is. But, it is. Uh, and I, but I think like the one of my favorite parts of your book is the talk, the song you did with Casual. Yeah. Because Casual is so interesting because... He sounds so effortless all the time. Yes. And, but it kind of comes together perfectly. So it, it almost feels like he's cheating, right? Like the frightening, frightening the cover stuff. of He Think He Raw is how he sounds. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much but, like I'm almost annoyed to be here, but I got to show you all how great I am. <laughs> I actually must. Got to let you know. And then because Hyro was so freestyle first like that mm -hmm. like our energy is anytime anywhere plug us in yeah like they built from that and their catalog kind of feels like that and i think i don't know some of your catalog after after locking in with them felt looser and more durable and maybe that that was a vibe you had picked up i don't know that's how it possibly yeah. i always tried to be a a sponge and uh, speaking of my memoir, I'm finishing up the audiobook version. Uh, it is such an undertaking, man. It's like a, it's about 300 pages, you know, in the paperback. It's about 10 and a half hours, just shy of 10 and a half hours uh, read out. Uh, so I've been uh, putting that together the last few weeks. And it's just like peeling this, these layers of something that I've never done before. It's so... It, it is an undertaking for sure. What's oh. it like reading the words that you wrote? <laughs> Bro, it's nuts because I'm about three or three to five years removed to some, from some of this material. Some mm -hmm. of some of the sentiments, my <clears throat> my feelings have evolved from what I felt. Some things I feel the same, you know, mm -hmm. some things I'm like. I've healed more from it. It is very interesting to read it back because I haven't read it since it came out. Um, wow. So I haven't read it in like two years. So I was reading some of the shit back like, oh my God, I'm saying this out loud. It's so different than typing it out. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like reading it back. Reading it out loud is nuts. So it's fun. It's been fun though. It is a whole different, like, because I'm an old movie buff, like, I would just be thinking, like, I guess I'm doing noir narration. Like, <laughs> I feel like you know, there's noir movies. Like, I think there was like a double indemnity or something. 
where he's like has the gunshot wound and the tape recorder and he's like <laughs> recording his confession and then that's like the start of the movie and then it goes backwards and he tells the story like, yeah that's how i would feel doing the audiobook is i would be like you know <laughs> it was a cold night in february <laughs> yeah. But, yeah i had to get like it kind of warmed up to it for sure yeah i believe it. it's uh the one i've heard that I've told is the craziest audiobook is Tracy Morgan's autobiography. Oh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to check that out. I Let me actually write that bananas down. Bananas in like the the <laughs> reading of it. Uh that you know I and, and that checks out with everything I know about Tracy Morgan. So yeah right. Yeah that sounds I haven't had the time but I gotta do it. I gotta get in there. The uh but yeah I appreciate we'll, let's go oh First of all, I wanted to, I wanted to apologize for people that are not on the list who should be on the list. But I decided that if I lent if I if I'm on your album, I can't put it on my list. That doesn't seem right. Um so, you know, PTG2 Sleep Sinatra, which is excellent. I'm on right, that. Right, it's right. fantastic. Um and Man, the one that really would be high, Slumber Logic's Detachment, Homie and Only Detachment, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is just an excellent album. It's one of those, you know, back in the day, people used to work on their album for years and years. And that's mm -hmm. how this album sounds. Like, it sounds like he took years putting it together because he produced it and, you know, does the rap. So he like really took the time and I'm on multiple tracks and it's it's beautiful and I tell everybody to listen to it, but you know, I'm on it a bunch of times, so I couldn't put it on the list. Apologies to Slumber. Um, superlatives? Do you want to do superlatives? Uh, we can go into the superlatives first. I was thinking about the, my favorite guest feature MC of the year. Uh, mm -hmm. And for me, that is Blue. Yeah. Good pick. Blue, uh, Blue is, is an incredible person they so blue put out two albums this year one with knots africa one with real bad man right um and was everywhere feature wise right um uh, and just really making songs better um uh, you know the track you know what with ritual uh with stick figure i absolutely adore um yeah it's the the wire season three episode one with open mike eagle uh just i don't know he just he just felt that like that he sounded like the blue that i was really excited about when he came out mm. you know yeah i don't i don't know k if you like there's a you know when kendrick lamar first came out <coughs> came into your orbit and you were like oh my god this guy's like the talent is incredible it's to take over the world. That's I felt that way about Blue. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, definitely had a big moment, well deserved. Right. So that was it. Do you do you have anyone some that you were like killing the features? Darn. Uh, Fonte on Black Milk's No Wish. Yes, that has been mentioned a lot by a lot of people. Very personal. Incredibly, yeah. incredibly personal. You know, I like my. Uh, personal introspective like let me just get this shit out of me you know um yeah. i think it was incredibly brave you know and uh i think a lot of people probably uh felt not so alone listening to that verse and mm. fonte does an incredible job at doing introspection without any pretentious underpinnings like he's just a very even if he guy. does get he gets away with a little finger wagging here and there though yeah, yeah. but he's so good at it it's like yeah. all right whatever yeah no he, <clears throat> he he taught a lot of people how to do that and i think yeah, yeah i'm i'm very happy that he's getting love on that and the documentary the little brother documentary is incredible um he's great in that and uh yeah boy did it, did it spark some ninth wonder conversation with me and some people? Um, it's yeah, it, it's a good one. So yeah, I would say that my favorite individual guest verse 
is uh yeah cavalier uh cav wins yeah for sure yeah on the armand hammer um uh, yeah we buy diabetic test strips mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um yeah every time i listen to it i'm just like there's something new that pops out i keep a mirror in my pocket it's track five um preservation you know of uh, Think about Cav Cavalier is interesting because he did incredible talent, someone who kind of dips in and dips out of the game, mm. but a clutch player, like someone who never blows an opportunity. Uh, yeah. So yeah. they were like, oh, we got a preservation beat for you. And they rolled up his sleeves and just went, went to work. Um, I adore that, that verse. Um, yeah. The, uh, any other guest verse people that you you want to shout out? Who else? Who else? To... I mean, I can't. I I I really loved. Um, this will be a cheap plug, but what I am God did on uh, the return of Big Perm. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah like yeah. not not to cheap plug myself, but I really love him and what he does. Yeah, yeah. and it was very unexpected for me person. It was like a personal like rap thing, so like. Uh, he sang a little, yep. harmonized a little bit, and uh, yeah, that shit was dope. I but know it is, yeah, talented. So many people, it's like hard to, all this, this year is so crazy, it's just hard to narrow down one, but like, yeah, Fonte was, when when I saw the superlatives, I was like, Fonte, obviously, but right. um, yeah, yeah, like, there's so, everybody kind of was getting off this year, for sure, so. Yeah, well, and people what? have communities right so now if ransom's got a new project he can call shane noir and shane noir is going to kill it on that track right and like these are guaranteed good guest verses for you uh you're going to sound great with it you know like uh, what do you think are the qualities of like an excellent feature <laughs> you're asking me well yeah i guess either one of us but yeah, uh, yeah i think um not I think understanding what the song needs mm -hmm. uh, and not like as an MC, I think a lot of us have the propensity to go in and say, Oh, let me just write my ass off. Um, I think there's nuance. And then there's also like, there's a lot of skill that goes into knowing when to rev up on a track and when to pull back. Cause like, you know, you might get. Um, I just got. I just got a. Uh, I just got a feature from a friend of mine, Greg Grease, who's amazing. But he only sent the verse. Uh, he didn't send the verse. He sent the hook, and the beat. So it's like knowing. Hope like now it's on him when he gets it back to know. You know to know what it needs to make it really, really go. I think you just have to kind of feel it out kind of feel it out put your best foot forward and like if there's like a if there's like a very intentional theme right mm -hmm. then like really sticking to that really going in on like what they're talking about and like some some rappers do the crazy shit well they're you know i've had one or two times where i've asked for the uh, um the other person's lyrics right and kind of like go off of like maybe a line or two that they even said in their their verse I might take something and flip something from their verse in mind. Mm. Like there's so many ways that a, a rapper can like approach making a song better. Cause that's really, I would, I would imagine that's what you would want to do when you hop on someone else's track. And if it's somebody with like a name, like you really want to make sure that like, like for me, I'm very, I've, I've, I've always come from the like super competitive era, super mm. competitive, like, you know, niche market of MCs are like, I'm gonna out rap everybody. Yeah, but yeah. but but knowing that when it doesn't even that doesn't even matter. And then but also knowing when it's like a real MC and you gotta fucking mm -hmm. you can't lag, you know, like if you try to get cute on it or if you try to like do some like, oh I'm just gonna do some laid back shit. Like you're gonna yeah. get eaten alive. You right, know what I mean? Right. So you gotta bring the best you to that table, you know. But um, also respect whatever's going on with the production and whatever the other person has done, you know. The uh, the one 
Kay, I think that I don't think it was the Cohen brothers who said like ninety nine percent of directing is casting. Yeah, um, mm. I think I think features like that, right? Like it's casting, you know, because every MC their your flow is a flavor, right? And so you're you're putting flavors together in a recipe, right? Like, and it's got to work. So, but the other thing that Scorsese told me from Philly. R.I.P. Scorsese, he said like that when he's getting a feature, if you go too hard about the pricing right off, he's like, ah. Because it's like, you know, your question should be, what is the song about? Right? What are we talking about? Like, yeah. as an artist, right? We I want to work with an artist who's interested, who's excited to work with me, right? Yeah. So I don't want I don't want somebody who's like, yeah, whatever. You got the money, I'll send it. You know, <laughs> it's, that's, that's not the dream. So the best features come from people who are invested. Cavalier is an example, right? Cavalier has a relationship with, with Kelly Chris that's incredible, yeah. right? Uh, and those guys understand how to do these concepts together and bring the best out of each other's songs. Uh the re- the relationship it's all about the relationship so can i segue into two of my like recommendations for the year yeah. just yeah go ahead off of what yeah. you're saying about like the duo yep uh the black cottonwood project is on my best of list Great. um i enjoyed that very much and also um jay skis and conway's pain provided profit i think was a really really enjoyable i kept coming back to it this year mm-hmm. And also, I believe, and this might be a hot take, it is the most inspired Conway performances all year, in my opinion. And this is including the West Side Gun Project. This is including his own project that yep. came out this year. He's actually got like three of the year. He just put out the something, Conductor Williams, Conductor yeah. Williams, which I wanted to like more because I, I think Conductor Williams was brilliant on there. Yeah. I don't know if Conway... I don't think, in my opinion, that Conway really stepped up to such great production. Yeah, um, yeah. For a short project, I know like some of the projects are just kind of to feed the streets, feed the uh, yep. feed the fans. But I think the Jay Skis and Conway was the best Conway rapping of all year because Jay Skis will fuck you up. He's one of those. Yes, he's got crazy like rap, like crazy raps, crazy flows, and like really good rhyme schemes. He's smart. So he'll he'll eat you up if you're not careful, you know. And Conway is ridiculously competitive, right? So he is. It makes sense that with Jay Skis, like let's go head to head, let's do it. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That makes sense. I gotta I gotta go back into that. Yeah. Um, I don't think I I listened to the full one. Yeah. It's good. It's it's not that it's not that long. It's it's mm-hmm. it's really it's good. It's uh, Jay Skis is really good staying on concepts, staying on you know. Yep. He's he's a tight, very concise rapper. Sharp. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with it. Um, you see, oh, the other one um, was the other superlative. We were talking about the, um, yeah, oh. Bright future. Bright future stuff. This is very important. A lot of my list are end up being people who I have never been on my list before, right? <laughs> like uh, every year. And that's cool. That's that's the sign of a healthy environment. And today, this year was so much of that. There were people who didn't make the list who I still adore their albums, right? So, uh, Patty Honcho on the Black Exploitation. Mm-hmm. That was a dope album. Just picked a like these dizzying kind of acid jazz seventies feeling beats or like soul beats, like. Black exploitation soundtrack sounds. Yeah, yeah. Just ripped them. Uh Patty's flow is just dizzying. Uh I love it. Unruly is a little bit more of like a yeah, he's a loud stamp down delivery. Like Unruly could be uh like the introspective one in Onyx, you know, they could throw him in there. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, Don't Go Outside is dope. I, I love that album. Um, and he thinks he's got a really bright future uh, because everything he says is real shit. He, he's he's giving you himself. He's just you know 
really performing the hell out of it. So, uh, Sun Moondy Midnight Oil. You remember that one, Kay? Sun Moondy. Uh, I remember. It sounds familiar. I think the cover. Let me see the cover. Kay doesn't remember any of the stuff we cover. It's <laughs> it just well, really. I mean, we've done so many shows. Like once it's I like, once I record it, it's on yeah, to the it's next. One. I'll I'll describe it. Kay. It's the Sun Moondy has like a battle rapper's flow, but he's very introspective, and it's very like avant garde. And the production was like Athman, who is like doing a lot of Indian sourced sounds. And okay. we loved it. We thought it was really great and it has a really he has a really bright future. Uh, I know for a fact that he has a next release lined up with Clown Cat, so that's gonna be dope. Okay. So yeah, Sun Moody's great. Uh, and yeah, so th those are just people that I was just like, wow, they really put it together. These debuts are really promising, and I can't wait for the future for them. Um anyone like that for you, Sam? Yeah. Yeah. Um Chicago, uh, Chicago plug. Brittany Carter had an amazing year. Um, Got to just continue to watch her. She's not necessarily new. I feel like a lot of people kind of started in 2020 and maybe had like pandemic, whatever. Like uh, I give them a lot of grace. A lot of people came out in 2020. Right. Um, yeah, she had an amazing year. She, I think she's got a bright future. Sexy Red, uh, say what you want. <laughs> she's problematic. But I could see her get, uh, being around for a little while and being um, interesting to watch. She's not the greatest rapper, but um, she does have the streets on lock, and there is a there, an art to that. Yep, yep. Uh, I, I, and also to have such a bad, I won't say that because that's insensitive. She had a sex tape leaked. It's literally, you know, fucking almost like a career killer, especially early in your career. Bounce back from that, got pregnant, bounce back from that, you know what I mean? So she's um, problematic, but I think she's got a bright future. Um, that's awesome. We we already talked about that Mexican OT. I think he's yep, got a bright yep. future. Yeah. And uh, he's been out, you know, these people have been out for a little while, but, you know, they're having like a breakout year to me. And also like LaRussell, yep. he, he came out with like a joint project. I didn't get a chance to hear that yet. Mm. And then he did a. Uh, I, lo I love what he did on the the E forty as well. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and, and by the way, to the sexy red thing, one of the things that really bothers me in coverage, right, is mm -hmm. like 40, 45 year old people, my generation, <laughs> being like, "Oh my god, like how ignorant is this nineteen year old, eighteen year old rapper?" And you're like, "Well, what are you doing at eighteen? Like, get me, get out of here." You know, there's like, been this this kind of type of rapper in every era. You know what it reminds me of? Kay will know this. The NBA commentators that used to pull people's eyeballs out, acting aghast when somebody shoves somebody. <laughs> you can't do that. Oh, that's not the game. And you, you need to get out of here. Sit down. I don't know if he was talking about Sexy Red. I think he was talking probably about maybe Glorilla or City Girls or something. But I remember Snoop Dogg said something like, it was very old manish about of him, and he was just like, "They need to respect themselves and stop talking about sex so much." And I was like, "Snoop, is he turning into like, like <laughs> Bayless before your eyes?" You're like, "Oh, stop it, stop it! Like, what the hell? Like, you had a whole pimp album, right? Like, he had a whole fucking arc where like the Bishop Don Magic Wand was like his spiritual advisor." Yes. Like, Okay, so you're pimping is what you're saying. Like, what the fuck are you even talking about? Yeah, like talk to me about the cover of your first album, Snoop. Like, it's the very first, on, very now. first thing he uh, did. Whatever. It's you know, and that's the hot tub interlude. You know, like come on, right? Like, it's yeah. I mean, it, it, that stuff bothers me, and it it especially gets leveraged at women. By the way, uh, for sure. And she's like I said, she's not the best rapper. She's not coming with like bars. She's got a good ear for the hood shit. Um, she's fun to listen to, yeah. like she's just fun to listen to, you know, like she's not fucking reinventing the wheel or anything. It's just authentic street hood shit. Like I've got a cousin like sexy, right? I got a couple, you know what I mean? Like yep. Yep. she's like definitely somebody that is like, oh, we've all met sexy red before. And by the way, that is a real thing in hip hop. When Jeezy broke, 
people didn't respect him in the main sphere, right? Sure. They were like, ah, this, dude, this isn't rapping. Oh, no man, yeah. Like Ad libs and shit. And like over <laughs> time, uh, over time, people were like, you know what? I had my best workout to that album. I can't fuck with it. You know, like <laughs> he's good. So that's kind of, you know, that wins in the long run. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's a good call. Uh, let's get to the top 25 albums. Let's go. Yeah. I'm excited. And Ke- if if people want to hear more about album 25, uh, which is Sundial by No Name, go to our No Name episode. Hey and I cleared the docket, just just me and him, and we talked no name, and it was it was great. It was a great conversation, um, a great intro to what we do, uh, because we actually talked about the art instead of people getting fussy about her. Um, sure. You know, there are people who are just like, I don't like her. She annoys me, or whatever. Like, there's way too much of that going on, and that's a yeah. way to dismiss somebody's like art. You know. Um, it no name so to put it this way because i don't want to i don't want to come off like bitter or anything the no name the no name that the media covers is like a socialist bombast right Mm -hmm. the no name that we know as no name fans and this album's a great example of it is funny and Mm -hmm. flirty and and like sharp and fearless it in criticism, not just of like Kendrick and other people, but herself. Yeah. You know? uh, that like that song where she's like, you know, I was like, I'm trying to, you know, I'm envying a white woman while wearing a wig. You know, I'm just like, damn, damn. Uh, Great writer, poetic as fuck. So, you know, like, uh, it's yeah, she's. She'll like just hit you with a bar that'll be like, "Oh well, shit. Well, you just rock my world. Okay, thank you." Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was phenomenal. I, I'm, I'm sure you guys saw her tiny desk, the recent one. Just yep. amazing to see like the 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 evolution of her over the past couple of years. Yeah, yeah. And you could tell like she's really leaned into like you could you could see her confidence has grown. She's yeah. really leaned into it, and and it's it's really incredible to see. And being one for conspiracy theories, Kay, I will tell you, I think there was a concerted effort to Azalea Banks her. Like, that they were just mm. going to use the Azalea Banks blueprint and get her out of here. He wasn't going on, like, like insane rants. No, Even but that's... that's they what her rants. They not, they, none of them were, like, yeah. so just out of bounds. And yeah. She's too smart for that. Like, they couldn't... They, I mean, she takes her. her she takes her digs, but it's right. nowhere near, like, an Azalea yeah. No, and it it was, yeah, she was too smart for that, and she rebounded from everything, from Cole coming at her, from everything, right? Um, and uh, just my favorite no name performances ever, even though she kind of, she kind of like caveated that one uh, earlier this year, you know. Yeah. But it's one of my favorite. I love a I love a clap back. Uh, uh, speaking verse of the year, Billy, fantastic Billy Woods verse. On oh my gosh, on that silk yeah. song, yeah, that was that. That's yeah, that was a real. I was really emotional with that. Like that was like a moment for me where I was like, oh, these are like worlds that are touching together, and I'm glad, you know, like I'm glad that this is all one thing. Like it used to be so separate. Everything used to be so separated. Yeah. Sure. In hip hop, mm-hmm. and like to know that Woods can jump on a track with no name, uh, you know, who's you know, wrapped on the biggest stages with the biggest people that's awesome. Um, yeah, that was a great Woods verse. Um, uh, yeah, it's yeah, it would so sundial. What tell me about sundial, okay? What do you what do you think? How how is it appreciated or depreciated over the year for you? I mean, it, it's appreciated more for me because. And, and we've talked about, you know, sometimes viewing artists as almost like, uh, almost like characters in a book, like fictional characters in a way. Yeah. And I think what No Name's done is like, you know, we followed her over her three, her three albums. And you could see how the character of No Name has grown. 
Yeah. And I think this was a like I think uh Sundial was like a was a really great chapter like in the book of no name. Right. And I'm and I'm interested to see where this where this character goes. My only knock on the album when it came out, and you remember mm -hmm. Kansas, I was like the production is sleepy. It's not as I love the production of Room 25. Oh uh, yeah. That's a high bar. That was a very high bar. I just thought it was not that. Over the year, I've been like, oh, this is her Neo Soul album. Like, I get this now. Like, this yeah. is Neo Soul sounds. And it works because she has a lot to say, you know? So mm -hmm. it, it's it's good. And it's a it's a soulful, warm, thoughtful experience. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. And and it's the dimensions, like like I think like you mentioned, it's uh there's there's different angles that she takes that like she you never know where she and, and this is like the high for me, this is one of the highest compliments you can give to an artist. You never know where she's going to go in terms of her raps and her, the angle and her perspective. Um so that I mean that's a really that's a really high compliment and I, you know, as I said, I'm I'm excited to see where she goes and how she continues to evolve. Yeah, eleven tracks, thirty two minutes, uh, and and you know, as I always say, so it's like great MCs. You you want you know you want to hear their album when it comes out, but elite lyricists, you want to hear every word. Mm -hmm. You want to block out your environment and make sure you hear every word of every verse. That's who. That's how good No Name is. Yeah. Yeah. You got to give her. You got to give her the attention. Yeah. Yeah. You. Yeah. This is not music to wash dishes to, uh, but yeah. And I. And a. And a good common verse. I'm. I don't love. Right. Yeah. Common, but uh, this is this is good common, at the end. Oblivion. Yeah. 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 He did. He he showed up for sure. <laughs> he showed um, up. Yeah, but a lot of the heavy lifting, whew, no name. Especially that interlude is crazy. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Potentially? Whew. Man. Uh, she doesn't need a lot of space to deliver. Um, going back to that, that J. Cole response was like a minute or minute 45 or something. She's uh, in and out, man. She's in and out. She killed it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a big fan of her. Um uh, Shout out to Kim. I'm biased. I mean, fucking women rappers from Chicago. It's just like, come on, man. I mean, it's just Chicago so got the best women rappers. It's hard to argue. Yeah, I mean, Freddie Old Soul. There's, I mean, there's so many great, you know, great women rappers in Chicago right now. Uh, it's it's awesome, and that's why there are people who are big Chicago hip hop fans who are who've never even been to Chicago. Like that's how deep the scene is at this point. Uh, <laughs> Number 24, we're going Heavy Heavy by Young Fathers. This, shout out to Cam from Crate 808, who had this as his cover art of the year, which I, I love. I love that pick. Um, yeah, that's striking. It's striking, and it's very, like, like, there's like a TV on the radio energy to how the songs escalate and get bigger. Um, yes drums and, and rice and just that uh, yeah everything feels like it's going to like bubble up and explode you know I, I I definitely had um it's like they have these cinematic moments and then it's like you jump off a cliff into the abyss kind of the lot of the songs you're just yep. kind of like that just took me somewhere yep. you know what I mean? so uh I, it's great stuff. I really, yeah, I really fuck with that album. It's fire. Sink or swim is crazy. Like That's my joint. That shit sounds like a gospel, like praise and worship type joint. They, yeah. I mean, it, they basically, you know, there's like an art that I think is not like in rock music, especially, right? I consider this rock music. I don't know what they consider it. Um, they just call that shit like indie, you know, a lot of times it's, it's, like, it's like a catch all, you know? <laughs> Um, but in, in rock, you can make a song sound like you know, like there's a, a thousand people in this band. You can make it sound huge. Um, uh, and I think there's moments where they make it sound really huge, and then you said you're right, they scale it down 
and then it's claustrophobic again. Um, yeah. It's a real dope album, and it was it was very high on my list, and it kind of went up and down the list, but oh, it's just beautiful. Uh, so, Kay, to you have you tend to ask these questions of like what what defines this part from twenty five on twenty five yeah. up. These are these are people who basically had me in a trance, right? I couldn't escape them. That's why they're here. Um, yeah, uh, mesmerized by what they did. So, um, and that's kind of the secret sauce, right? Like, it, if your album is great on paper, but I never listened to it, I can't really call it my favorite. That wouldn't make mm-hmm. sense, you know. Uh, be my favorite in theory. Uh, so these ones were just dominating me. Um, and I just couldn't get away from them. So, number 23, shout out to number 23. Psalm One gets a direct shout out on this album. Oh, shit. <laughs> and and I got, I, I was like emotional about it. You know what I mean? I was like, that's amazing. Uh, because it's like you know, there's, I mean it's so this is such a unique album amongst this list it's an album dedicated to like the experiences of coming up in the scene and meeting everyone <laughs> meeting everyone going from city to city meeting everybody's opener everybody in the audience and learning a, a million names and then people fading away and like, or not. And you have this strange untold history. Um, sorry. I haven't even said the album. Uh, we're <laughs> Another triumph of ghetto engineering by open my Eagle. Um, it's, it's short, right? It's not a long album. I think it's like nine tracks. Mm-hmm, it's a quick one, but, and that's my only knock is I wish it was longer. Uh, because it's it's so interesting um and this this phase of his career is incredibly interesting it's 25 minutes 34 seconds yeah so yeah but it, it this phase like i open my eagles one of my favorite rappers who ever lived he's a tie high for me um and it's because he there's so many parts and sections to an open mike eagle song like he'll do a bridge that connects to another thing that goes into another thing. And it's, it's, it's incredible. Like uh, as a craftsman, he's incredible. He's the guy who invented the term art rap, you know, like he's that guy. So this phase of his career, he has kind of tossed away those constraints and he's, he's, it's a lot looser vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he's able to get personal, and just trust where it's going because he's done all that work. He knows how it'll structure itself. Um, and the result has been fascinating and personal and awesome. Uh, so I, I really like this album and like, I love the features on this album. I was just telling still rift today that he needs to give me an album that he needs to give me a pre-order link that I can pay him for. <laughs> uh, I'm a big fan of what he's been able to do and shout out to Mike for always putting him on the stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, Blue, yeah, the, the crazy young Z-verse, beat yeah. raps, beat BT Rap City, one of my favorite. And, uh, our Kelly bar was uh, insane on that on that uh, uh, on that song. I was just like, huh. <laughs> it was. You know, as he said, as they sing, kids, little fat ass kids. Um, <laughs> he's just so young. Z is like exactly the opposite of what Open Mike Eagle is. Like part of that outsiders click says crazy shit. Had a yeah. had a project called Scumbag, which is just bananas. Um, Mike still loves that stuff, you know, and and loves putting them on. So it was, it worked great together. You know, great mix. That's a dope song. So, what what did you think of the album when you when it came out, song? Um, I mean, 
I'm so biased. It's like that's the homie forever. I already know that there's a standard there. Um, as as a Chicagoan, I appreciated it so much because I can always hear the references kind of like within the references, even like the titles, like the grand prize game on the Bozo show, like Bozo show was huge in Chicago. Mm -hmm. WFLD 32 was a ch like a station still is. They call it Fox 32. It's Fox 32 now, but it was WFLD back in the day. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. little shit like that, like makes you kind of like, damn, like that shit was a like. I I kind of have that that POV as well, so it's just like mm. I just it just feels very relatable and yeah he's I mean he's brilliant like I can't you saw you saw our podcast together you know oh yeah oh yeah I definitely it's yeah. like it's it's hard he's hard to he's hard to beat and right. you can't leave him off a list when he like drops because he's so intentional. I think his beat selection is very like interesting. <laughs> and, um, yeah, this project, I, I like this project. It was fire. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, and, and I love, I love that he's just letting himself work when you, when you loosen up the constraints, right. And you don't have to mastermind every album, you can put out more albums. Like, so that's the benefit of that, right. You can see he's been able to do that and just kind of be like, okay, I'll give you 25 minutes of all this cool stuff and it's yeah. awesome. Keep it pushing. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he's released a project every year. Like he hasn't missed a year, has he? Um, I don't, he hasn't in the last, I don't think so. Like, I think he missed a year in something. advance of like the trauma anime and divorce thing, which was like his last big hmm. concept album. But that is the high watermark, by the way. That's a concept album. Yeah, 2021, he didn't put anything out. Yeah. And then he got that out. And once that was done, I think he was like, I just want to chill. Like, I, I don't really want to go and and give you my next masterwork at this point. I don't want to just enjoy rapping, you know? Um, and it was funny. This album is so personal and it's so related to his experiences the pitchfork review kind of implied that it was like a, a swan song that he was like <laughs> that this was goodbye or something. Um, but I love me a wistful old rapper. It's awesome. Uh, <laughs> it's great. You know, but we'll get more wistful old rappers or higher in the list. Uh, don't worry about them. <laughs> They're coming. Um so yeah, next one is number 22. An another person, by the way. Okay, we'll get it. Incorruptible Saints by Sleep Sinatra and Tell of Angel, number 22. Another yeah. MC who was highly, like, you know, organized in the project and concept and taking the time and making sure it was all right. And then a year or two ago, kind of was like, threw that to the side and said, I'm going to... I, I want to do more. I want to be yeah. more present, right? And so I'm not going to, to painstakingly pull apart everything. I'm going to, to move with it um, and has benefited from that, you know? And the Televangel effect is is great. Uh, yeah. I was able to, to, to sit with Televangel and be like, how did you get the best lyrical performance of Sleep Sinatra's life? This is insane. Um, yeah, that's, that's yeah. a really dope album. I was able to write about that, review yes. it for Chicago Reader. And uh, yeah, that album's really tight. It's got some of the, some really good Sleep Sinatra performances, you know, like just very good quality, really good quality album. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, on that Widow's Peak, was it Widow's Peak? Ah, uh, whoa! Widow's Peak is crazy. Uh, that's my shit. I mean, I also loved, like, there's just so many different chambers to the album, even though it's not long. Like, it's 27 minutes, 43 seconds. Very like, I love having this album back to back with the Open Mike Eagle album. They're kind of similar in in some ways, right? Uh, canonized. He starts singing, right? Yeah. And he yeah. and he does a great job with that create a player is more of like a kind of a 
a flex song with Archibald Slim that's a, that you kind of need because it's a very smart album that takes apart society in a lot of ways. So mm-hmm. it's a real breather moment. Uh, yeah, to just kind of like get on your shit, get on your just like I'm yeah. the I'm the best shit. Yeah, Fire Forged with Milk and Lord O. Yeah, oh my god, that, yeah, Milk, that. having a good uh, year. Yeah, the title track to end it is bananas. Like it's it's so cool. Um, and it means it's, it's a meaningful album. This was a year full of really intelligent albums yeah. in the independent rap scene that really spoke to the world we live in. And that's one of the reasons why when the media went with rap is floundering, we were like, sorry, like I just heard four that. albums that changed my life, you know, like get out of here. Uh, yeah. So this, this is one of those really meaningful um, yeah, Incorruptible Saints, uh, highly intelligent, and yeah, it's really about adversity forging you, right? Like it, the adversity, the t- traumatic kind of experiences lived in this society and the injustices, and how they make you stronger, you know? Uh, which it almost connects to that. Okay, you remember that? Um, I Self Divine album that I loved. Um, what was it? Uh, oh, oh, yes. Had a years of, ago. I had a bunch of R's in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I remember the. Oh, Rituals of Resilience. Yes. Rituals of Resilience. See? I knew it. Anyway, no, it's it was very, which the Rituals of Resilience is beautiful because it was about that. It was about like. Yeah. You know, you guys say all these things about black people, but it's amazing that we're here and we're doing what we're doing. You know, yeah. um, I mean, the intellectual rigor of that album is just yeah, like very. Yeah, sure. Oh yeah, the, yeah. He picks shit apart for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because he was a teacher, right? I think he was an educator of some. Yeah, yeah. He's he's done a lot, a lot of educating and yeah, activism, and he's well read, and you know. He's one of those. I, I think I found his email or something because he's like high up in a charity organization in a, like a nonprofit organization in in like Minnesota or something that helps people. Yeah. Um, and so I was able to, to get in touch. He's like, yeah. And I did a written interview with with I Self Divine. He's yeah. like one of the craziest, smartest things any, anyone's ever said. It was like going to a school was awesome. Uh, but yeah, this is felt like that to me. Um, so yeah, there's that. That's Let's do one more in this grouping. Space Heavy by King Cruel. Let's go. Mm. Oh yeah, man. man, King Cruel. Now, because and sometimes I make fun of sad albums if they're you know, <laughs> but, but I will say, like it's. There's some people they're so good at sad that it, yeah no he's like the dark chocolate of sad you know and yeah, like yeah. there were times this year K where I was in real physical medical pain mm-hmm. and I was laying in my bed and I put my headphones on and be like King Cruel Space Head and it no, was no. It made sense it all made sense. Half it's like a, a dark surf album, so I get it. Yeah, half <sighs> sleep, half, you know, in pain. Sad boy, sad boys up a thousand points with this one, man. Yeah, <laughs> he was, he was yeah. killing. And, and this, the thing that I love about Space Heavy, is it's also kind of about fatherhood. Like, it's also mm-hmm. discussing, like, becoming a father, but not in a weird Kanye way where he's, he's like talking about butts and and evil shit and like being weird. Like he was uh, like he it connected to him and his music and like um and it made sense the way he discussed it and it was it was still he's like still very sad and it made sense. So I was like, Yeah, okay. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, he's oh, man. very I mean, great voice brooding and smart, yeah. Sure. Yep. We talked one about one of the best one of the best voices uh, in music, I think. I love his voice. Yeah, yeah he's uh, really, you know, I, I love a good voice. Somebody that's like 
immediately it's like oh that's such and such you know what i mean mm -hmm. king cruel has one of those really unique voices where like he gets on the track and you know it's him you know very yeah. commanding yeah even and if I it's soft and you know secretive maybe he's like because i just i just got into mike i just realized how to enjoy mike um and so listen to burning desire he might be like the mike of alternative rock like um uh, he's 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 like the secret sauce, Kay, we've talked about this before, is that King Cruel really understands jazz really well. Yeah. So there's always integrations of jazz and like long, painful saxophone horn strokes. And uh, it really builds the scene around the guitar fuzz. And it's a, it's become his sound, you know? Um mm -hmm. And it's really hard to make a sound that is just your sound. Right. But he's done it, you know. Um, yeah. One of my favorite, like, collaborative songs of the year is Sea Girl with Ravina. Yeah. It sound, they sound really good together. I have never heard Ravina before. When this came out, I had to go back and listen to Ravina's album. It's really good. It's not in the same genre as King Gruel, which <laughs> makes this even better. Like that's that's yeah, yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, they really sounded beautiful together. Yeah. Um, what was the one? If only it was warmth. That's a King Cruel moment for you. Oh, that was good. Um, <laughs> yeah. When when life fucks you over, this album is here. Mm. <laughs> this album is here <laughs> when the chips are up you're gonna want to play larry june right you're gonna want to be you're gonna want to be like oh but like when the chips are down space heavy is gonna be there for you i'm giving you options at every level of success yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. there you go all all feelings all emotions yep we're gonna get it done the uh, oh, we're hitting some of my favorites. This is gonna be exciting. Um, so the next set of five 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. 20 is Jaguar 2 by Victoria Monet, 19 is Rich by Homeboy Sandman, 18 is The Fish That Saved Portland by Televangel and Milk, 17 is Chung Shui 2 by Chung, Brap. Uh, by SD Knack is number 16. So, whew, Jaguar 2, it was funny. I he, She went on, I think it was one of the late night, one of the Jimmys, right? One of the 17 Jimmys that host late night shows. And she was like performing, and she did really good, and she performed on my mama, and I was playing it for my wife, and she's like, why, why is this so important to you? I was like, because this is what pop should sound like. This is great song, great video, great song, great performer. She's seasoned. RB pop is back, baby. That's right. Yeah. This is pop. This is pop. This is what pop should be. It's fun. Earth, wind, and fire is on a song. Like it's great. People having fun, you know? Uh, great they collaborations. This up to the hype. Buju Banton on the thing. Crazy. I mean, it's, it gives you big moments. Uh, it doesn't leave you icky, which this is one of my problems with R&B, right? It's like, uh -oh. you'll, you, some of the R&B, and it's, the dudes are guilty of this, certainly more than anything, right? Uh, they'll like bring a very dark energy. Um, oh, your, your boy, Brent Fayez does this, right? With the the dark evil r&b it's mo it's yeah it's modern it's modern r&b you know? there's yeah. not cuz I, I was thinking about it cuz uh i was listening to uh i think my mother has she's got Sirius XM so they have like that radio station with like the 2000s r&b and it's just like a, it's almost like a completely different genre like yeah how how far and I and I think we 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 talked about this before. I, we had Alicia Keys episode a couple of years ago, where we talked about how like Alicia Keys, you know, he was huge in the early two thousands. Like if you put her songs on the radio now, she would be they they wouldn't even play. 
I would think. Interesting. The uh, I it, to me, Kay, that whole stuff. The and Brett Faz is talented. Yes, uh, the the, the <clears throat> these people are talented that I'm talking about. But this it's very like built on that first weekend run of like you know ladies passed out in bathtubs in with drugs and stuff, and it's yeah, a so genre. Like a cynicism to it. I mean, R and B used to be romantic. Now it's really like, you know, am I am I cheating on you, or are you cheating on me? Like one it's of like us is cheating. Down. I don't know who. Yeah. Come down. Everybody wants to be bad and like naughty and cheat on each other. They right. don't necessarily want to be. There's a lot of like asking for forgiveness. You know, like yes. um, not permission. Whereas right. You know, it's the, like thematically, it's it is pretty dark and it's pretty like, well, I'm gonna get mine. I don't really give a fuck about love type shit. You know. Yeah. If I've listened to so much of it, Kay. To me, it's a bunch of grown men trying to act like sexy vampires. And I'm like, get that shit out of here! I, you know, like I just picture like wearing a dark cape in a dark room and just being like. She's mad because I had sex with her sister. Yeah, that makes sense. Get out of You're here. Right. Um, You're right. So, <laughs> did, I say this all to say Jaguar 2 gives me guilt free RB, right? Mm. It's awesome. Oh, my mama is fun. Uh, yeah, party, you know, the party girl song or whatever with Buju's great. Uh, yeah, it's Cadillac. Stop asking me for oh. shit. The closer is a great closer. Oh, man. it's really good R and B and pop albums need to have that good closer. You know, yeah, you can't leave it hanging. Yeah, uh, Hollywood is my favorite. I think Hollywood is amazing, uh, but this is also a very slick, cool, like album. Yeah, like you said, Cadillac and Pimp's Anthem. It, there's a, some real laid back moments in here, uh, but her dance routines are bananas. She's a performer. You know, I. I hope she performs at the Super Bowl one day. You know what I mean? That's my that's my hope. Uh, because I want everybody to win. Um we got a chance to interview Homeboy Sandman this year, okay? Uh, yeah. I have been debating Homeboy Sandman with my friends for years. And I got a chance to tell him that. That's so fucking fun. I got a chance to be like, I've always liked some stuff you've done, but I've never connected fully to it. You know, I've never had a full album of yours that I love um, until recently, right? Don't mm -hmm. Feed the Monsters with Quelle Quel Chris changed his direction. And he knows it. Like, we talked about it. He knows it. And and, and that was so surreal for me, like, because uh, we, we, we reviewed that album, year, like, in 2020. And so hearing him talk about an album and, you know, getting a fresh perspective on it, Oh. I mean, that was a really, that was a really like eye opening, surreal experience for me. And hearing him talk about the shit he said on record that he regrets, like yeah, uh, the songs that he doesn't perform, uh, the dark parts of his career. Uh, that was it was just an amazing, very human thing. And Rich has just stayed in my car all year. It's the most mm -hmm. mature Sandman I think we've ever got. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. There is like a, you know, put on some clothes, little girl bar on there that I would like to cut of the, like, I think the first song. But other than that, I really, I really enjoy like that. He's, he's flowing into the music now, you know, mm -hmm. his voice is well, it's a warmer, almost yeah. like a warmer turn, you know, like got warm tones, major co chords all over the album, like a lot of earworms. Yep. Kind of mature rapping. Yeah. Yeah. I think you I that's a great point because I think he was he was always delivering his punchlines with a very sharp tone mm -hmm. because he was always kind of a little pissed at you. <laughs> like a little pissed at <laughs> what was going on. So yeah. I think at this phase in his life, he'd much rather be conversational. Mm -hmm. And it's really opened him up. So like therapy is just so chill and off the rip it's fun never yeah. mind too with the big guitars um i don't know i i yeah it's 
you can listen to it and just let it run all the way through 26 yeah, minutes, so. 20 yeah. seconds. Yeah. So I I've I told him I think you're in the best phase of your career lyric. Um mm-hmm. so yeah. And and I think in the best phase because he sounded like no, it sounded he said, you know, he said like he said that he was in a good place in his life as well. And I, I think you can really hear that in the music. And he, and he he mentioned that as well. Like, even when he listens to his music, he's like, yeah, I, I really like where I'm at right now. Some artists are better when they're in a bad place in their life. Homeboy Sandman's not. Yeah. Homeboy Sandman. I like when it's I like when it's like that for artists, when it's like, yeah, you gave us some some dope shit when you were like fucked up out here, but it's nice to hear that like you're not fucked up out here, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it creates a weird dynamic when the artist is better when they're unhealthy. Oh man, it sucks. Mm-hmm. Cause then you're like, you know, like you're you're the weird Wu Tang fan being like, man, ODB needs drugs again. You know, and you're like, oh, this is don't do this. Um, I mean, there are certain artists that, that I mean, unfortunately, it's just like, yeah, when motherfucker was fucked up out here, sounded a, a lot better. It's unfortunate, you know, right? Because either way they go, people are going to be disappointed. It doesn't matter if they right. get yeah. or if they stay fucked up, it don't matter. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, but this this yep. is awesome and it's it's growth. The music videos are dope, you know. Yeah. I, 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 th- I hope Sandman continues to, uh, to grow and show people how interesting a person he is, and that he's that he's taking in things and growing, and listening, and that he's not hard headed, right? Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's good. The fish that saved Portland. Mm. has to be one of my most listened to albums of the year number 18 i used to when my son was was in the soccer season k this year every single soccer game i would get on the sideline i'd put in the earbuds and i'd play milk <laughs> get myself ready for my son's game it was so uh, i was i love milk uh so um, sam what did you think of this one that good uh indie hip hop from the PNW. I mean, oh, man. a lot of good stuff coming out uh from there. But the beats are slapping, introspective lyrics, just good shit. Like uh the MSG beat is insane. Ooh. Reminds me of like some RZA shit. <laughs> uh pain and leather. That was that beat like floored me. Uh the posse cut with AJ Suede and Sleep Sinatra is really good. Uh, I like the Milk's features last year and this year too. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I think uh, I know he had a bar about uh, Cleco paired with Popeyes. That's right up my alley. I'm very much a. Yep. Uh, I'll I'll take some. I'll pair something that's kind of bougie with something that's very like I would say um, more more um, relatable and more accessible. You know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think it's a. Uh, like again, Televangel, like, yeah, beat is really, really good, and Milk sounds really good over him. It's good, good, really good, really good indie hip hop. Really I texted good. my mom about this album when it came out because he has a line on there where he says, "It's it's Christmas, and I'm with Chinese like my Jewish friends." Yeah, and I was yeah. like, "Yeah, that I feel seen now. This is yeah, good. yeah, yeah." He got a lot of bars like that. This is good. Um, so, yeah, it was, yeah, it's just like I think there's there's a few things here. First, yes, he's like he's not really lumped into the white rapper class. Like white rapper is more like of a stylistic delineation to me. Like mm-hmm. white rapper is like Greaves, you know. Um, it, it's people are just like, you know, I'm a fancy poet, and I'm safe to bring to your mom. You know, it's that kind of thing. Um, and Milk has no interest in that shit. Milk is like, mm-hmm. no, I'm I'm standing next to Nacho Picasso, and we're gonna say gross things together. Let's do it. 
you know um i'm waxing poetic about old shoes or basketball players like he's yeah he doesn't really like yeah he doesn't give like if you heard him like and didn't never saw a picture you might not know if he was white or not you know what i'm saying right. like whereas like yeah like you said like which was very interesting what you said like some white rappers sound like hi i'm a white rapper and i'm a yeah. rap while white you know yep I mean, that was him him describing white rappers was one of my favorite moments of the year yeah in terms of milk came on and we had, one, we had a white conversation rapper. about the white rappers <laughs> um, it's milk and white rappers as well um, <laughs> you know i can't that's how i came in the game with just bad a lot of white rappers so it's yep, just like you yep, know yep and it's yeah there was like and, and milk is a street dude like milk has been through a lot of shit so he's this album is kind of about how annoying he finds most rappers like because <laughs> he's real street dude. he's just like get out of here with this like your fake gun bars and like yeah yeah he said I'm, if you don't got a uh what'd he say he said if you don't got a um a, a, a rap sheet you've never been to jail about it yeah gun bars yep no he's yeah it's it's awesome like th this the what the the thing I think that keeps that kept bringing back two things, one was how how utterly comedically exasperated he was with with rapping with with like being a rapper. Most people are like, "I'm a rapper, yeah," you know, and they're excited. Milk is like, "I guess this is what I have to do." Fuck. Um, but well, the second thing is, so few rappers are funny. Funny. Like there are rappers that are whimsical that have timing that can like do stuff. Yeah. Milk is funny. Like milk Hilarious. is funny dude. So I I really enjoy that. Baby Bash is one of my favorite songs of the year. Um I just how that story flows and like my dealer looks like Baby Bash and starts singing Baby Bash. It's uh it's fucking great. You know, this it's also, I guess it's rare, Kate, because isn't in this indie scene, there's so many concept albums. Right, there's so many in-depth concept mm -hmm. albums you have to unpack uh, that are touching, and they might teach you about history. And sometimes you just want somebody who's going to go nuts and bar out, you know? Um, yeah. Over and that, I mean, it, that's literally what he said. That's what he said he wanted to do. Right. <laughs> Success to me. Uh, so yeah, I, it, one of my absolute favorites, and it, it's something I talk about with people that are in the scene that knows music i'm like like how do i tell these people that their delightful concept album isn't as fun for me to listen to as milk you know <laughs> i know i know that thing is like an award winner but i i'm jamming over here to this you know um so that's always a push and pull in this he always has been really um oh number 17 Chung Shui 2 by Chung and Katola, Montreal. Um, I love Chung, man. Love Chung. Uh, this one took me a little bit to grow on because Katola's beats are so unique. Uh, the, the soundscape on this is different. The last one, uh, See You When I See You 2, I think, was like very like Mike Schaub, Nicholas Craven. I was like, yeah, okay, okay, I get that. I'm, I'm with this. This mm -hmm. was very, I don't know. There was like toasting energy to this. There was like some, you know, Caribbean vibes to this music. And her flow slowed down a lot to accommodate some of that. Um, but she's so her slow flow is amazing. Her slow yeah. flow is amazing. Yes, yes. Her confidence is bananas. It's through the roof. It's like that femme fatale rap. Yes, yes. Her flow, like it gets deadly at times, but yeah, she like like uh, like you said, she she accommodates and like uh, she's reminiscent to me of some early Nikki, like tone wise, just the tone. Mm. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, He's nothing else, just the tone, not necessarily lyrically. Somebody said. No, it was Sun Ra. Because Sun Ra was pitching this. Um, and he said, 
that it was like Foxy Brown meets Bahamadia or something, which is okay. Um, but yeah, I think she like it was funny because I I was like I tagged her on a review of I think it was Sweet Dreams, and she didn't retweet me, but she did tweet immediately after like quote one of my lines and just laugh at it <laughs> because I said something like you know she can go from flirting with you to killing you in a very short you know yeah. time mm-hmm. period yeah uh, Ben Patel rap for sure yeah yeah and so that was this you know sweet dreams is is a nasty like tough ass track um I think she fits really well like to me that you know that whole like fuck rap like vinyl label kind of hard nosed end of the world you know with like Ito and and thirty eight special and all that like she Dark. would fit, she would fit beautifully in that yeah I just think she's from Montreal and it's probably a different end of the world but um, she's from Montreal I thought she's from Texas. She is from Texas, but she lives in Montreal now. Gotcha. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. She's part of that scene with Craven and Shab and all those. Yeah, yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I think she's super dope. And this album, I just I just couldn't get away from it. Maybe it is just how bonkers her flow is. Pro Dillinger's great on rubber gloves and oven mitts. Her and Shab always sound great together. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh man, the drum sound. Yeah. Yeah, she the she has a patois flow that's very dope too. Um I think a lot of people have a difficult time pulling that off. Um yes. <laughs> but she killed that. She, she just great. Um well, not like that it's not convincing or anything. I am no judge of that. But that it kind of it's too jarring to the song. That it's like a new direction for the song, and she can segue in and out of it effortlessly. Her flow gives her a lot of career options. Uh, she would be a great collaborator for a lot of different, um, yeah, a lot of different producers. Good deal. Yeah. Um, Brat, ST Knack, and V Don. Mm hmm. My favorite SD knack of the year. Same. Much better than the one with West Side Gun. Yep. Yep. I, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear you say that. And I love Knack all year. He did a lot of great stuff. Um, but he like this something about V Don. V Don brings the best out of people in a lot of ways. Like V Don will find artists that release a thousand albums a year, pluck them and have their best albums like him his collaborations with willie the kid or willie the kid's best stuff um something about v don you know mm-hmm. to me v don be- they're beautiful oh, beats yeah. are beautiful. v don beats are like like a really beautiful sports car or something they're like a top of the line luxurious entity yeah um uh, and knack gets in this top of the line sports car and just muddies it up. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and SD Nax is it, he's he's trilingual. He speaks English, Spanish, and Griselda. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you know how some rappers try to speak Griselda and you like, God damn, you know, like this style was here the whole time. You know what I mean? Like stop trying to do like this this thing that is like kind of like a meta version of something that's always been around, you know? Yeah. But like SD Knack really has a way of just being very slimy and grimy, but yeah. It's elegant. You no, know? it's it's like in school there would be people where it'd be like they'd flip their style and be like, I'm a punk rocker now. And you'd be like, this doesn't work for you. And someone else would walk up and be like I've, I haven't watched this Mohawk in weeks. Like they sure. were just living that life for real. Yeah, just effortless. <laughs> yeah. And like, so Knack bumps into Griselda and it's like, oh yeah, I've been doing this already. Yeah. Like, 
I'll Banana be- Yacht is my shit. Like that's the first time I heard SD Nack on that. I think it was yeah. like the Hitler Eight or Seven, yeah. one of them. And like just him with his ad libs, it's like, how high is he? This motherfucker is on planet zero right now. Like, just like I'm getting, I'm getting. You can't even get the contact coke high, but I'm getting a contact coke high off just hearing this man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we have to talk about the ad libs, K. So like, I there's an ad lib on Brat. It just kills me every time. Like, so he says, he says like. You better get a bodyguard like Kevin Costner. <laughs> and it's like, okay, it's a good bar. It's cool. We get fun, Revit. But then he, the ad lib comes in and it's him going, oh! <laughs> like super overreacting to the to the bar. Bro, rappers be so fucking proud of themselves. <laughs> he is one of the moments that he just so proud of himself for what he was able to accomplish in this booth right now. It's just so funny, bro. And he knows it too. Like one of his best ad libs is just him yelling ad lib. Like, yes, brilliant. He's he's <laughs> like that's the thing. What did he say? It was years ago when I was doing my knack research. Like t- this year of like digging into the old knack. He had one project where he's like, like I'm I'm ghetto, but I'm smart. Like I'm smarter than you think I am. You know. And that is forever the SD knack like combination, right? Of like hitting you with the dirtiest, grimiest, weird shit, but then bringing it back to something really salient, really interesting. Yeah. Um, the last line spoken on this album, Exodus Ito, he says something like, you know, I'm a street and, but why, like, what would I be if I if I wasn't like somewhere with my feet touching the sand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was him just being like, "Yeah, I'm in these streets and I'm doing tough shit, but the goal is to get enough money to get the fuck out of here and enjoy it." Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> like, what am I doing if I don't if I can't be on a beach with my feet in the sand because because of all this shit I went through? Uh, and that's a real, actual, interesting, insightful point. He has that stuff. It's just buried in there. You know? Mm-hmm. But, oh man, Penny Pension is undeniable. Uh, yeah. The- Both things slaps. Exodus is my favorite. Exodus is awesome. Again, Ito. They, just said they sound really good together. They do. Rigs, Rigs on Rules and Regulations is really good. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's some great stuff here. Uh, I hope, Kay, that you will you will join the Knack Familia and uh, start start enjoying this. As, as <laughs> but I do think basically like that as much as he was ever present this year and he did great work. This was not his most experimental. Year. He's got weirder shit from from yeah, back in the sure. day that's, that's more interesting. Um, yeah, but it's it's great to see him shine. So we'll do 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. So 15 is through and through by Baby Rose. 14 is The Great Escape, Larry June Alchemist. 13 is House of Disorder by No Sash, Steel Tip Dove. 12, Sorry I Haven't Called by Vagabond. Number 11, The Benchmark. He Left Nothing for the Swim Back by Sketch 185. Yeah. Through and Through by Baby Rose. I I'm I have not met a bunch of people rapping this album like I am. Um, it's I adore this album. Uh, her voice is very almost like Billie Holiday strange and Eat guttural it kind of cracks and breaks a little bit like yeah, it's yeah, little quirks yeah yes quirks and one of the things that auto tuning people's vocals has killed is the quirks of vocals mm-hmm. right? uh, some of my favorite singers sound always sound like they're about to lose it but they don't, you know, 
uh, and Baby Rose has that, um, and through and through is just this big, glowing, like, pop R&B album, you know? Um, and it has jams, you know? I Won't Tell with Smino. Yeah, that was dope. Crazy. Uh, yes, Stop the Bleeding is crazy. Dance With Me. Dance is With Me is my jam, too. Yeah, I mean, it, it's... I don't I I love it, man. It's 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 just a really cool album, really fun, uh, stress free <laughs> RP. <laughs> Though it has points, it, it talks about relationships, uh, but it handles what it wants to do responsibly, you know. Yeah, like my my one like I guess thing that is not the most positive critique of the album was like sometimes it falls into a little bit of a like mundane sort of like, I hate this term, but uh lo-fi territory, but it never really stays there no. for too long. So it kind of like redeems itself anytime I uh, noticed that it was going there for me, but it all knocks. It knocks for real. It's just some good ass soul music for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's released on like the secretly Canadian label Jens Lechman's label so that they do a lot of indie stuff so it was weird to see this release there like oh wow, that's interesting like that's cool um I'm glad to see different places kind of taking ownership of that and being like we like R&B we're gonna put out song so that's cool um she's yeah she's got a really cool voice did you listen to any Baby Rose this year Kay? uh I did not. I'm gonna have to listen to this now. Check it out, man. Check it out. Yeah, I'm running for some good R and B though. That's through and through. Oh, let me make a recommendation if you want some good R and B. I just yes. heard something today that I was like, "Fuck!" Like I never heard of this person. Um, Leon Thomas. He's got an oh, album shit. called Elect- "Electric Dusk." It is very good. That's awesome. He's like yeah, a Grammy talking. Award winning kind of songwriter who's been behind the scenes. He's but he's written songs for like Ariana Grande and shit. But that that album that album is like a quick listen as well. But he he gives you he gives me like Miguel, mm. like not necessarily like Miguel kind of falls victim to pop corniness to me. Okay, this this is not like that, you right. know. That's awesome. But yeah, Leon Thomas. But back to Baby Rose. Baby Rose. Wow, is- that's a dude. This dude was he was on the Nickelodeon show Victorious. That's how. Really? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Like he's been. He's definitely like seasoned. You can tell he's like fucking. Even if he's new, he's not new. Now yeah. we're in Kay's wheelhouse. We got yeah. Him- <laughs> now you got me excited. Now you got him plugged in. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Glad I could. Uh, you know, y'all put you this list put me on a lot of people. So awesome. I was I was searching for like like let me listen to something that's not on here that I could possibly recommend. No, so much fucking music came out, like it's just crazy. Yeah, and I'm I'm just very happy to have some of these artists, like I rep them hard, not just like in these broadcasts, but like in life face to face situations. And like people came out like, Oh, I listen to that shit. Oh, I love that shit now. Um, and it, it was so, it's so fun to do that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, Larry June, The Alchemist. Ooh. The Great Escape. So, the I, at first, I was grumpy about The Great Escape. Okay? At first, I was grumpy about it. Uh, By the beats? The beats? What happened? No, no. Here's the thing. Uh, my first reaction to the album was, Alchemist outperformed Larry on this album. Mm, I can see that. Because if you think about like something like Haram and you know, and then going to the Rock Marciano album, uh mm. Elephant Man's Bones, and then going to this, mm. it's such a beautiful change of soundscape that I was mm. like, ooh, like that's amazing. Meanwhile, Lyrically, I thought Spaceships on the Blade was a better lyrical performance by Larry. Yeah, uh, Larry, I'm going to just say it. I'm going to just say it. Yeah. Larry be cheating his ass. I love Larry June, by the way. Yeah. I love Larry June. 
Yeah. I'm a late June fan for sure. He be cheating his ass off though, like on the rapping though. You know, he's got he's got his sound down, he's got his thing down, yep. he's got his world that he's built, you know, his smoothies, his bike rides, his luxury <laughs> hotels. You know what I mean? Like we know what we're gonna get. He's a he's a fun. Like, dare I say, even sexy. Listen, he's very sophisticated. Yep. yep. Kind of just know where you're gonna, what you're gonna get with him. Like, he'll, then he'll give you like, what's the last song on there? Like the the candy shop. The, uh, is it Margie's candy? Like somebody's candy shop. Yeah, Margie's candy shop. Yep. Yep. It gets introspective. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like, okay, cool. Like he reminds you that he still can rap because he's very much coasting on personality. Yeah. And, and tone. And just the fact that his voice sounds so good, he can sing, he be cheating. Yeah, no, I, I, love, I, it I love that. No, I understand your point. I think it's all, you know what it's like, hey, it's like an NBA player that only has five moves, but nobody can stop the five moves. Stop it, right. So it feels like he's cheating, but you're like, we can't stop the moves, though. Like, <laughs> Yeah, like, it's not like, you know, even though, like, <laughs> there's the Dom Kennedy sort of mm. – Dom Kennedy walked so he could run sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But then like there are people who critique his just everything he does. But it's like, but you can't do that. You can't do it. You can't do like what Larry June does, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've grown to really enjoy the album. It's good. Uh, it, it's one of those things. It just like, it felt like being up. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. When, you're, when you're winning ocean sounds makes a lot of sense you know um yeah, or when you're um you know like a solid the solid plan it's like okay give me six let me get 60 days let me let me get on my shit he's a very much let me get on my shit rapper you know man solid plan is one of the most interesting songs of the year to me because he just states it so succinctly and sincerely yeah. He's he's not, very, he, doesn't, he doesn't try and sing it. He's just like a solid plan. Very elite cat in the hat raps. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. He's like, you can do anything with a solid plan. You're like, what the fuck? I can't. <laughs> like, are you serious? <laughs> I never thought of it that way. No, he's, <laughs> and, and then having Bronson on the track with him. To doing his to do his Bronson. Another cheater, another oh. cheater, and I love this man. I love Action Bronson. I, I I'm subscribed to his YouTube. I watch Fuck That's Delicious every fucking week. I listen to all Action Bronson's albums. I've met him several times. Great, yeah, great. Also, listen. a cheater. Yep, yep. That motherfucker will be like, "I'm a dinosaur," and I just yeah. ate a quail egg. You be like, "Yo, that motherfucker's cold." <laughs> He and and to be honest, I I don't think I don't think Bronson gets enough credit, and this is why Rock Marciano works with him all the time. Bronson doesn't get enough credit for actually bringing New York back, right? Like mm -hmm. with you know, we think of Ka, we think of Rock, but Bronson was a part of that, and it's because there were so many bring New York back MCs that were tryhards. Sure, sure, sure. And he would come into the verse and be like, I'm in my pool doing martial arts with ladies who are naked. And you'd be like, What? You know, it was you were <laughs> it was unexpected. Everything he said was unexpected. And so you yeah. couldn't get enough of it, right? Um and then even if even if he sound like Ghostface, ooh. Yeah, I mean it, that's how you know he's cold, because no one even mentions that anymore. No, well, because I think he's evolved to a different place but like i to me the ghost face thing was always an incidental tone thing like when you start rapping yeah and they're from the sound it's like new york, very new york very new york and very like i mean you hear that with west side gun right it's like wow raekwon like what <laughs> like damn you know but like yeah you let it you let it go because you know it's like there's a whole there's a whole like it's intentional. There's a there's an intentional sort of wave about it that's not like you said, like not it's not like a try hard or I'm trying to do this. Yep. 
Orange Village. I love Orange Village. Oh, yeah. Um, what a song. I could um, they got like a couple tracks together. I could I could go for a slum village Larry June yeah. project. I mean, I could go for a slum village alchemist album. Yeah, that would be dope. That mm. would be dope. So I would to me, like so and K, when I had to go to the office this week because no power couldn't work from home, I went into all the conference rooms and in orange I wrote good job, Larry. Um just in, in salute to the god. Um so yeah, this album stayed with me. You know, it went up and down, but I mean, I you can't, I can't get away from eighty nine earthquake and you know sixty days and it was it's just elegant. You know, yeah. the other thing I love about this album, <laughs> okay, this album has features from everybody the underground fucking hates. <laughs> it has Wiz Khalifa on there. With a, with a bad Wiz Khalifa verse, by the way. Um, it has your uh K's best friend Big Sean on here. Yo, can we talk about this verse? Let's, Let's talk about Big Sean. Big Sean was not finna come on a this is the thing I said, right? Earlier we we're talking about what makes a great verse. And this is, yeah. I think, up there with some of the best verses of the year. Big Sean has not sounded that good in a decade. And I like Big Sean. This is the best Big Sean performance. And this man's put out albums. Right. Did he sound better on Larry June than he sounded on his last album. And he sounds good. Like, Big Sean really knows how to rap. He really knows how yeah. to like, find his pockets and stay there. He's got big, big songs. He always rises to the occasion. But I think he was like, I think deep down, Big Sean was like, I'm not going to let this lazy rapping ass motherfucker eat me up on this track. There's no way I'm letting Larry June outshine me on this. Because if you're not careful, Larry June can outshine you with a lazy flow. If you're not yeah. fucking careful, because his beat selection is so, I think he's really like very intentional and has got a very great ear for what he will sound good on, you know? So yeah. I think I think Big Sean was not not at all trying to get outshined at all. So he went crazy on that shit. And and I I would Ooh. say that, and to me, that works as a strength for Larry June as well. I remember one of my big moments, I think uh, Currency put out a mixtape like during the Super Bowl or something weird. Uh, it was called New Jet City, right? Ooh, yeah. And New Jet City features Juicy J, Jada Kiss, Styles P, Juvenile, you know, just all kinds of monstrous MC, Fiend, you know. And so, and everyone is destroying, right? I'm like, every feature is blowing it out of the water. And I was like, yeah, all these people sound better than Currency, but to me, that's a tribute to Currency, right? Like, their best verses aren't other places. It's right here, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so I think that's Larry brought that out of Big Sean. You know, L Larry's environment brings it out. So, yeah. Yeah. But Big Sean killed it. And, um, you know, God bless him. We'll get another great verse out of him in a few years. Um, so, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. House of Disorder, my favorite Steel Tip Dove album of the year. And there's been many. Uh, no Sag is ridiculous. Um, not a, not a real. I don't think it is a rap album. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it is something else. I think it is, uh, beautiful shouting. Maybe is what I would call it. Um, man, but I couldn't get enough of it. It's so crazy and cantankerous, and there's so much just fascinating stuff going on every time i talked to dove i was like this is my shit uh beatles rambling, rambling no. oh my gosh boys oh man yeah I, I just couldn't get enough of it i had to k i had to make myself stop listening to the album so hmm. that i could do other things in my life <laughs> had you you are drunk on this album. You need to stop it. Um, this is bringing out your weird energy. So, yeah. Turns me into a gremlin. 
So what uh, what did you feel? Did you look, enjoy this one, Sam? Um, it was like, had some very good moments. I think I like other performances better. It's no shade though, because yeah. it's the really, there's some really, really dope moments. It's reminiscent of Danny Brown at times, yes. okay. in, a, in a good way, in a good yeah. way, you know? Yeah. Um, the song Dance is really dreamy. Oh. It has like an, almost like an ODB, like, yep performance it's some good that. funk rap like it, it's not bad at, by any stretch but i think um both of these both of these artists have a ton of music yep so i think like there are some other stuff from other projects that i appreciate more but that's not to say that i didn't appreciate this album it's a very tight it's almost like funk rap at times yeah. you know yeah yeah i mean it's and, and but it almost has like a, a and I put a spell on you energy to it, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. The vocals very rough at times, you know. Yeah, screaming Jay Hawkins kind of mm. uh, performance blues, like yeah, 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 delivery. Blues. Yeah. So I really enjoy that. But yeah, you're right. With when you have when you have people like No Sage and Dove. Who put up many projects? Everybody's gonna have a different sweet spot, right? Yeah. Some people might be like, "My steel tip dove is decay with Fat Boy Sharif, right? Great album." Um, mine is this album, No Sage, uh, House of Disorder. Um, I just kept coming back to it and yelling along with it. So it's it's amazing. Like you know, it used to be. Like back in the nineties, two thousands, like you know, an artist would release one album a year -ish, you know what i mean if on most artists would so there was really only like one version of that particular artist mm -hmm. nowadays like artists are releasing so many so many different albums like you said like they could have a different version of still tubbed up like there's so many different versions of some rappers yep yeah you know what i mean it's it's, it's kind of wild to think but like you said like some your favorite project could be someone else's least favorite project and the thing I love about Dove is that if a crazy unconventional artist comes to Dove, Dove is like, yeah, no problem. I got this. Mm -hmm. But right. also right. if someone comes and wants conventional, he can do that too. Like mm. it's not he's not worried about it either way. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. It's great. Shout out to Steel Tip Dove for a great year. Uh, sorry I haven't called by Vagabond. Uh which I've been stumping hard for. Uh, it's, it, it's this album that took me over in parts and pieces. I was interested in it. I listened to it. But the more I heard it, the more I just couldn't get away from it. Um, uh, because of the duality of it, like the, I love, I love songs that are, that sound happy, but are terrifying. <laughs> and this is full of them. This is awesome in that sense. Big, rich, beautiful, ornate songs uh, with dark underbellies that are, it, that is really dope. Uh, dance songs. Um, yeah, great vocal performance by Vagabond. I don't know what genre it is. Is it? Some, I, I'd say electro pop, but it does other things. Yeah. The, uh, it's, I was able to, we were able to talk about this one, uh, Kay, on the, you know, with the episode. And I think you really connected with it as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the, the tags on it on Bandcamp are alternative indie, alternative New York City, urgent New York. Urgent. Uh, I don't think any of that really describes the sounds, but. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. Um, but what so how did you feel about it, Sam? How how did this this hit you? Some standout lyrics and some shit I'd dance to if I were like booed up and drunk in the club, you know. Uh as a Chicagoan, it it some moments uh had me thinking about other albums. Mm. Um, but I think that's just 
a byproduct of getting old as hell, you know, and just have, having heard so, so much, you know. Um, my jam on there is Lexicon. Lexicon uh, is great. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Kind of like a rock. Uh, it goes into rock territory. The album does a little bit, but this was like a really good, like electro pop. Yep. Moment with like a great guitar riff and like that that was for me uh that was like my absolute favorite on the album but it's got some moments for sure i keep coming back to can i talk my shit i just think it's a great way yeah to yeah, yeah that's it yeah that's dope. i love i love that as an opener um uh, yeah how's this one aged for you ken i uh, i mean i i haven't gone back to it but i i did I did. Now that I remember, that's one of the ones I do remember. That I did enjoy that album. Yeah, made out with your best friend. Just yeah, has a really kind of punky like, energy to it. Yeah, just interesting perspective. I I love the song. Right, there's been a lot of songwriters with interesting perspectives. Yep. 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 Good. Yeah. And by the way, connecting to that, I want to say, Psalm One, thank you for the recommendation last week. I listened to Guts by Olivia Rodrigo mm -hmm. and I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It was fun. Um so yeah, I'm glad you I'm glad you liked it. She's great. I mean, you know, they they say she'd be stealing and stuff, but I feel like certain albums you can't get if you don't steal a little bit. She's a huge, like huge pop stars. Mm -hmm. I, I'm surprised if they don't steal. Right. There's it's some just steal better than others. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, and, and, and you want the big, you want the big music, don't you? <laughs> there's people that are stealing, uh, on lower levels who don't get called out because they're not as important. Like, yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're, I remember there was like we were at the poetry reading that I used to run. Some guy was reading a poem as if it was his. And one guy just called it out. Nope, that's by Henry. Da 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 da. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> like, damn, how are you going to the poetry reading? <laughs> Get out of the slam. God, Get out damn. of the slam. <laughs> slam was, uh, it was great. But yeah, the, you, if nobody in the crowd knows, then then you win, right? Um, so <laughs> that's the stakes there. But Vagabond, this, this is a really unique album of. And and it just yeah, I, I guess I needed a little bit of the warmth this year. <laughs> That's what it sounds like sonically. Um, he left nothing for the swim back. There might be people sketch one eighty five. There might be people who are like, "How dare you put this at number eleven? This is number one, right?" <laughs> because sketch one eighty five, and he's a fucking mastermind. Mm -hmm. um, I will say this. I think this album is probably more important than this list. Um, it, Sketch 185 has been around for 100 years in Chicago and moved to Brooklyn. And he's, this is the first time that he's putting out stuff in a while without like analog tape dispenser as the producer. Analog tape dispenser kind of matches the crazy energy that, that Sketch brings. Um, and so the war church is, you know, gun diplomacy that that's where that comes out of, but Jeff Markey kind of contrasted it. Like mm. he did not try and match the music to that. It's almost like the sonic template is almost like true detective theme music. It's like really spooky as shit. Um, and over that, sketch just tramples and sounds fantastic and it's a new sonic chamber um and so i i i'm still in awe of this album it's one of those albums that i'm gonna keep coming back to and just being like fuck you know um because man you know um badly drawn hero is bananas East Side Summer. That's my jam. That's one of the songs of the year to me. Um, yeah. It's good to see Sketch getting love because, again, like, 
Mm -hmm. he's been around you know and uh you know this is a this game is unforgiving so it's really dope to see that he was able to find it's it felt like he found something that clicked and he just rode that shit um i think uh some of the beats are even kind of like and this is a good thing like definitely on like some lp shit but in a good way um uh and like Sketch comes from like, like in Chicago, right? So, like he's a poet, you know, but like it's rageful. Yep. Um, so there's a lot of gems, and you can't, you got to give him like you know again like like a no name in in the sense of, um, you got to give it the attention because it's just so much. It's it's dense, right? So you got to like really like, he commands your attention. So yeah. Yeah, they're not just hot lines, right? They're like, we we talked about this before, Kay, but like some MCs have the ability to reverberate. Like their their lines like ripple through you and it's almost like a stone skipping through the water, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Where you just like, you feel it. So like, I can always hear him saying, you know, my uncle got shot because that's what happened to uncles back then. You know, I can always hear him saying that and it always means something to me, you know, um, and he has a way of making it not just a smart line, but a line that means a lot. You know, and I think that he, he adds weight to what he says. And that's maybe the battle rap, um, you know, the sure. stuff. And but yeah, everyone I talked to when I started talking to Chicago people, they were like, I learned this from, you know, Sketch yeah. and on and all those guys. And so, you know, yeah. I mean, a very humble man, too. Just, oh, I, that's why I appreciate him. Just very humble, the humility. He was on. He was on when we talked to him. Yeah. He was giving a Chicago history. He was breaking it the heck down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love it. Color Five did great on that album too. Oh my gosh! Yep, yep. Oh, and there was a, but it, it wasn't just all heavy shit. Like the nights and weekends stuff about bartending was so awesome. Uh, with Jeff, with Prem Rock and Head Trip, uh, you know, it was just a really cool. It's a really cool album that to me is unlike anything in his discography. It's definitely a um, like he turned. A, I feel like he turned a corner with this one, you know. Yeah. And if it means we get more out of him, I would love to get more out of him. You know what I mean? Like I would love to get. So more. I would. I would. Yeah. I would be. Yeah, I would be bummed if that wasn't the case. It feels like he's kind of found a groove. So hopefully he continues to just ride that shit and fucking stay on backwoods. Where you can get Willie Green to mix and master your shit sounds pretty damn good. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound quality is up there for sure. Yeah, so I'm I'm with it. I I, yeah, I love that album. So let's take it uh, a few at a time here. So we got the Greater Wings by Julie Byrne at number ten. Glorious Game by Black Thought and Nell Michaels Affair at nine. And we buy diabetic test strips at eight by Armand Hammer. Good stuff. We're getting there. Um, yeah, the Julie Byrne album. Yeah. I did not expect to have this was a recommendation to me from Dash Lewis, great music writer. Yep. Um, and I pressed play and I was like, oh my God. Um, just overwhelmed by the lyricism at play here. Um, and to me, it has the most romantic album, like, uh, moments in music this year. Like, if you asked me what is the most romantic song in 2023, I would say Lightning Comes Up from the Ground. Moonless is not far behind. I I I'm a folk person. I love folk. Uh, this is 
this is exactly what I like from folk is like living in someone's really well articulated perspective. You know? Yeah. It's heart squishing. It is. It is. It is. And it is fair. If you're like, if you listen to this and you're like, ah, oh, this is corny, that's fine. Put that on me. I uh I love the love. <laughs> You know, I can see why people love this album. Yeah, I probably won't necessarily listen to it again, but right. I enjoyed it as I was listening to it. It's it's soft, it's dreamy, it's yeah. mostly cinematic. I love a good, you know, it it it's very to me. It takes a lot to make your make music sound that big, right? And and it can either be corny, or it can be you know executed properly and i think this was executed properly yeah i really like the four five six oh sorry three four five six moonless summer glass summer's end lightning comes up from the ground hell of a thing um it just has a great way of bending phrases and words and yeah like, lyrics are definitely on point on point yeah and but yes i understand if you like some people's flavor palette is just not this gushy, not this gooey, right? Like some people stay in like, you know, a metal space or whatever, you know, um, they stay SD knacked out. Yeah. <laughs> I really enjoyed going from SD knack to this, you know, or throwing them in the same playlist. I really enjoyed shifting gears in that sense. So yeah, it's a very pretty album in the yes. deepest way I can state that. You know what I mean? Uh, so that was that. The uh, number nine, Glorious Game, Black mm. Thought, El Michael's Affair. Man. I mean, Black, Black Thought's my top three of all time, rappers, so I'm just completely biased. He can really do no wrong. I love that he's given us so much music after years and years of just him not doing anything outside of the roots. Yep. And that was like a big deal to a lot of like black thought fans. And he just has been coming with an onslaught of just great albums with great producers and people you wouldn't necessarily expect. And then L Michael's affair, like just the live instrumentation and so good. He's yeah, I mean it's aging like a fine wine. Yeah. Fine wine. Hey, yesterday when I had to work from the office with the power out and stuff, I I have this thing whenever I work in the office and I'm like, you know, waiting for my wife to pick me up or whatever, I'll kind of like stand on this thing and just listen to music and like go nuts and dance to it. Um and so as everybody leaves their job and then they'll look at me crazy. So I just put on the weather and I just, and I listened to it and went crazy and then rewound it and did it again. Like the weather <laughs> is one of my favorite songs of this year. Um, I I was texting a friend of mine. I was like, Nas couldn't do this. Like, this is, this is thought, man. Um, and I was like, I just, yeah, him getting wistful and, in his, in in his memories, it's amazing. It's it's an amazing situation. I'm still somehow is like one of my favorite song endings of the year. Um, I just love how that ends. Um, he like kind of laughs to himself and just just it is beautiful. Um, yeah. What were you gonna say, Ken? I was gonna say. I mean, it, it's 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 funny to think, but Jimmy Fallon that may have been the best. Jimmy Fallon may have been the best thing to happen to Black Thought's career. Yep. Yep. Mm. Uh, in terms of, you know, he sound like when you don't have to worry about touring. He can do what he wants to do. Yeah. Now, now he, he just sounds, he sounds very relaxed, but yet hungry at the same time, yet experimental. Be, you know, because he just sounds like he's rapping without any consequences, if you know what I mean. Yeah, if you like it, so what? If you, yeah. you know, yeah. I was he, he knows that he's set no matter what. Hey, By yeah. the way, Kate, I've been saying this shit for years. Like I how I got over is my go-to roots album. Like mm -hmm. I love how I got over. So I was always like, nah, man, this has been great. Like I'll I'll fuck with this, you know. 
Um, so the the thing, the uh, the important part of Gloria's game to me is it's for for people that love Q tip. The Renaissance means a lot to us. The Renaissance is definitive Q tip, but not tribe. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. And mm-hmm. this is definitive black thought, but not the roots. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it exists for me that way in a just a beautiful way. And it's a beautiful yeah. cover. I'm so glad that this album's gonna live with me. And I get to I get to be like, no, that's thought, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, I meant to let me just rewind. I meant to say this about the sketch album. That's some of the best cover art to me this year. So yeah. good. Simple. Yep. It's motive. Yeah. But yeah, yeah the, the black dot cover art's really amazing too. Oh, yeah. And, and I love that it came out on Big Crown Records, uh, which is a, an R and B label. They just do soul music, you know. Uh, so it's just really cool to have that because that's where he naturally fits, right? Um, L. Michael's Affair is a soul band. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. You know? Yeah. Um, so this was, this was to me much better than cheat codes. Um, you know, it gave me what I wanted. Uh, yeah. So I, uh, yeah, I think it's great, but it probably doesn't need a ton more of explaining. Um, check that out. We buy diabetic test strips by Armand Hammer. Um, like an overwhelming sound. Like this, this doesn't sound like anything else they've ever done. Like this is an overwhelming sound, uh, partially because of JPEG Mafia and the wild beats that he gives them, partially because of the jam session. Have you heard about the jam session, Kay? No. So apparently preservation bumped into them as they were, they had the JPEG stuff already. And he was like, what you guys should do is do a live album. Like a with live band, like with you know, and they were like, That's interesting. So they had a live band just do a jam session. Oh, they invited all the producers they wanted on the album to be there and sample whatever they liked for their beats. That's dope. So mm. these of the sounds and samples are just pulled from that jam session that they staged. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. It it gives it a real unique sound. Um what when I think of of We Buy Diabetic Test Strips, I think of how funny Woods is on here. <laughs> yeah, I always think Woods is funny. I mean, they think he a lot of people just take him so serious, and he is a very serious MC, but he be cracking me up. So it's yeah, it's like dark humor end of the world funny like it's, yeah. it's definitely like uh you know white girls interpolating both beyonce and stuff and like um <laughs> this was very high on my list uh just the jungle pussy features and uh, come on oh <laughs> she's amazing come on that was amazing i i was very excited for that yeah and it really it lived up to everything we wanted um I mean, they're kind of the standard with this shit, right? Yeah, dude. LP so. on, on Gods Must Be Crazy. Uh, just a bunch of stuff. It it was just... Trauma Mike? Trauma Mike, the beat. They crazy. DJ Haram. Yeah, was a lot of uh, but it's... It, it was like a big blockbuster movie. It's amazing. But I over time, it slid to eight, which is pretty wild because it was higher than that. Um, because emotionally I didn't connect with it as much as other albums. Um, it, it was, and maybe I will in the future, uh, but man, you throw any of the songs in here, like almost any song on here into a playlist, and the playlist just got like 20% back. It's just bonkers. Uh, a big, big album uh, that is very, it the culmination of a lot of, of 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 the backwoods community, right? The power of the backwoods community. 
Um, yeah. Number seven has really been in my top ten all year. Um, it's we buy it's I'm faking my own death just to get some rest by Sleeping Dogs, which is Andrew and Jesse the Tree. Yeah. Jesse the Tree is from Rhode Island. Andrew's from Philly, uh, which they play with on the which song is that with the basketball jerseys. I love that one. Uh, where they just like start name checking basketball jerseys. Like, uh, I'm in the throwback bird or the Marcus Smart, and he's like, I'm in the Embiid or the Iverson. Uh, yeah, it's it's awesome. Uh, yeah, so it's 13 songs produced by Andrew, but really the sound of it, how unique it is, comes from C Money Burns, who mixed and mastered it and gave it a real interesting kind of lo-fi Elliot Smith-ish sound. Yeah, uh, it's like warm and sparse. Yeah. No? Yeah. Good. It's a sharp, sharp dude too. Very sharp guy. Yeah. Yeah. Graduated in my class, uh, a class above me. Same school. Uh, so, yeah, main. And he, yeah, I just don't think any rap album sounds like this. Like, because yeah, of, yeah. of the unique style of beats that Andrew does because of the unique mixing and mastering. Um, and because I just think as a rapper, Jesse, the tree is like a new England poet. He's a very new England poet. Like there's all these kind of weirdly serene images distorted in the Mm -hmm. thing, uh, that you can always find and pick out, um uh, and it's just yeah it's i i think he really shined on this album but over time i've really fallen in love with andrew's performance and all the weird punch lines he brings to the table and the crazy hooks um this is someone who loves cameron as much as he loves uh elliot smith so it's it's just fun to have that mixture um yeah someone did this hit you at all or you know it has its moments for sure um it, like it's different and i like that i like that it hit my ear different than a lot of things striking in that way uh yeah. slow dancing in the mosh pit is my is fire to me mm. navy blues is great great harmonies almost leaning into like pop territory there yep. um fuzzy orange headband has a really great beats and earworm yep. and so that you know like, uh, yeah it's like like uh, like i said like there's so much music like this might not have landed on my top 50 list, but mm-hmm. I understand, you know, I understand why, why it's on here. Yeah. Um, but it's got some great moments. Like I enjoyed listening to it. Yeah. Tired trees is, is crazy, but yeah. Yeah. Fuzzy orange headband uh, is something I, I just play all the time. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a great, great album for us. And I think, for a lot of the indie rap community, because what we what happens in the indie rap community is we end up making the same albums. Yeah. Oh God. Yes. And and so to have st- like this to me, like if you talk about new groups, right in twenty twenty three, this is like the best new rap group that I've like. These guys sound right together to me. Mm-hmm. Like I want more more albums. This makes sense. Uh, they bring out the best in each other. Uh, they learn from each other. You can feel it. Uh, so, I, yeah, I just really enjoy this stuff. Okay, have you come back to this one at all? Not? not fully, yeah. but time to time. I mean, I did. I did. This is one of the ones I did listen to for the review of the show. Yeah, for this show. So, yeah, I dig. I dig it. The uh, so that was. That was number seven. So we got, oh, Raven by Kalila, number six, which to me is like, so sometimes I do a Mario Wario thing without with albums, right? Uh, the, the good and evil, right? Uh, and this is the, the Wario version of the Vagabond album. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because it's, it's still dance music, right? It's still 
but it's dark and icy cold. and cold. Yeah. Uh, but very emotional, still very emotional, still very there, just a, a very different feel to it. Uh, yeah, this this uh, this album is bonkers. Uh, fire. So far. Sorbet, you know, just, yeah, it's something that's just, I need to have near me, I guess, musically. <laughs> like, um, also, another great cover. We talk about great covers. Like, the oh, cover is so fire. Vocally, she dips into like some Mariah Carey territory, but it's, uh, I like it. Sonically, it's like genre dipping. It goes from like drum and bass to like, dance hall to like basement grinding R&B and house and all these places in between and it sounds good it doesn't sound like oh you're just trying shit you know it sounds like no you're playing around like you're fucking using all the colors in the Crayola box and mm. you're fucking you're That's doing your big one you know you're yeah. not you know what I'm saying like it's fire um like she's got she makes great choices yeah Her voice is great and the title track, how you gonna make us wait three minutes for the beat drop? And it's just like, you know, like a lot of times, you know, you'd be like, what the fuck's going on here? Right. But yeah, that the Raven track is the title track, so dope. There's a lot of jams on there. Have you heard this? Did you hear this before the, the list, before you got access to the, to the you list? You know what? I meant to listen to it. I had heard like a few tracks yeah. and, and thought it was great. And so I already knew, like when I saw it on the list, oh, I was yeah. like, "Yeah, yeah, of course." Yeah, that's awesome. No, it's it's missed call, closure, contact, that whole run. Yeah, in the middle of closure the is my shit. Holier is my shit. Yeah, it's fifteen songs, which it and, and there, there's not a bunch of short songs on this, right? The shortest oh. song is like three minutes 36, 34 seconds, like. And these these are full songs. This is a full album. Uh, Vibes for real. Yeah, she it's like she you gotta get into it, you know. Yeah, but once you're there, you're there. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a real and it's another like this is a bet the way the same way um uh, sketch 185 is the benchmark to get in the top 10. Mm -hmm. Raven is the benchmark to get in the top five. Yeah. 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 You better you better be working because Raven Raven's badass. It yeah, it was a lot to move this one out of the top five. Um so getting to the top five. Man, number five, ritual by stick figure and the expert. Mm -hmm. Um hey, I don't know if we've had a crazier moment this year. Then when we sat with Stick Figure and he was breaking down how he might retire. Mm. And he was breaking down how TikTok doesn't fit his shit and like just all the different machinations of how this industry working this way just doesn't fit with him. And he was just, he and he wasn't like angry or even depressed. He's just a very straightforward person. Matter of fact type of way because i do remember that it was just, it was just like, a matter of fact type of thing. Keep yeah. doing this. like and after this album came out the love for this album was real like the expert the, with the psychedelic like tones uh really gave a new energy to to stick um and all and was a stick figure fan it was like he said like stick figure was the first person he set beats to uh and it just came back around but like he the expert loves the fact that stick was able to get some love for this right um and watching someone go from i'm about to leave to oh shit i'm tough in the party uh was was kind of crazy um and i think the forgotten still gives me chills every time. Um, it's, yeah, it's a really beautiful thing. Yeah, I'm, uh, very solid. Uh, Tanya Morgan, 
my guys was on there. Oh, I love Tanya Morgan. Yeah. FC was having a great year. The Don um, Will verse. Is oh my god. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah, shorthand. That uh, that that was yep. that was very fire to me. It's just very slow melodic beat with the introspective, you know, lyrics is right up my alley. Yep. Very Def C killing it on service. I mean, he's again Chicago man. Yeah, we a solid break. Yeah, killing it. Lots of great, 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 great guest verses. Yeah. How how would you describe the Chicago music scene to like an outsider? Oh, uh, there's just so many different flavors, man. It's like, where do you want to go? If you want to, you know, if you just like motherfuckers who sound really good, who know how to style, who know how to pick beats, like you can get there. No, I mean, okay. I mean, I'm sorry. Let me clarify. Like the community, because it community, seems like, oh. yeah, it seems like, like there's know. a lot of almost like cross pollination, and there's like yeah. a lot of tight. It's it seems like it's very tight knit. Yeah, I, that just you when you get like people who have kind of grown up with each other, mm -hmm. and you know, it's just people know each other, and it's very. It can be very clicky. Yeah. But I do believe that there have been more there's been more collaboration as of late than uh has been in a long time. So, you know, you're getting great music and uh people kind of like reaching out and fucking with each other. So that's dope. But I mean Chicago is a very, very much uh, you know, call it a city of big shoulders. So you get a lot of big egos. You got a lot, you get a lot of people that are like, you know, just kind of think they're the best. So, you know, can get a little shady at times. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I have to say, Kay, when I started doing this Free Music Empire stuff, 2011, 2010, Chicago rap scene did not feel like a warm community of <laughs> happy folks. It it felt very see, you know? it felt very crabs in a bucket. It felt very at each other's throats for whatever acknowledgement you could get right fix your drive or whatever whatever spot you could find you were fighting right. for to the death i think that generation went through and then another generation of people came up and i think people were like we don't want to do this this way <laughs> like i i want to welcome people rather than do this so i think i think people that are that were important like stood up and changed the way it was moving. That that's how it felt out from the outside. I don't know. Yeah, it used to be very clicky, like we have our squad and no one else allowed. Whereas now I think people are opening up a little bit more to doing things. I I'd like to thank um pe people like Rich Jones will just yep. have just yep. so many different people on a project like you know, like he'll put me on a track with somebody I never would have thought to be on a track with, you know, and not because there's any beef, but just because we never did it. You know, I'm mm. definitely of an era of people who are just like, we know we're great and we're over here and it's not necessarily beef with anybody else, but it could be, it couldn't be like Chicago has very very sensitive about its shit but like we breed some of the best mcs from like everywhere like even like if you talk about you know it's controversial but like drill and how everybody is doing drill now that's the chicago thing you know um you have like our we always will have like our jazzy sort of rappers um now you hear the babies of Chance and the babies of Saba, you know what I mean? And people who are like just extremely influential. And then you even have like a, somebody like a Lucky who doesn't live in Chicago, but rep Chicago right. and it's extremely successful just on the low and like really influential. Someone like a Juice World, rest in yep. peace. You know, like there's just so much going on in Chicago. But as far as like the indie hip hop scene, it feels it feels brighter and it feels a bit warmer than it has been in in previous years for sure. That's beautiful, yeah. yeah. And and yeah, this I, just 
stick figure story is, is awesome to me because it's someone who is always kind of too normal for the rap world <laughs> too much of a traditional person and uh the expert found a way in to to make the cool things about stick figure shine uh so big love to the expert and stick for giving us an incredible album that i love number four real bitches don't die by carrie foe mm. bang <laughs> doing it special effects man that's awesome yeah. that's that awesome i love it. it it's i've been repping this album relentlessly uh all year um carrie foe has a way of like creating hooks that just beautifully sum up the situation uh, that she's trying to talk about um, and sing rapping in a way that is just awesome. Like she's a real talent in constructing um, all of this stuff. So I, yeah, I love this stuff. And we I love that. I love that this album's so high on your list. I mean, it's fantastic. Um, I got to write about this for the reader, Chicago reader for for the release. And yeah, she's this is much better than her last project. And I enjoy I enjoy all of Carrie Fell's shit. Oh, yeah. This I think this album was really a step up and uh there's a lot of Chicago connection with that. Um with a lot of the beats as well. I got the mind on there and yeah. uh went to her show when she was on tour, got the t shirt. So, you know, awesome. you know when you get the t-shirt, you fuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Folix if Folix does the beats on this, right? And like yeah, they yeah. have a real yeah. they have a real continuing relationship. Yeah. Um Folix did like a lot of the low key superstar Wait, stuff. Is it Folix or Felix? I, I people could be calling him Felix. Maybe Felix. Felix. I'm pronouncing things terrible. Uh, so, so do I. I'm, I'm going to go with Felix. So yeah, it's uh they're this is a really smart album in terms of how it's produced and yeah and you know southern it, as fuck yep um uh, and boy that that gangsta boo verse holy shit rest Look, in peace gangsta boo on white caprice it i mean it's everything i love about gangsta boo Devin the dude on dog dog yeah. hell of a song Dogs that help. All right, that's a great. I'm I'm happy. She's also been very pretty vocal about her gripes with the you know industry. Yeah, yep. This was the, this album was kind of her taking her shit into back into her own hands, you know, because like this is what happens now with with artists. Like they might have a breakout song, and now it's like pressure, yep. and it's very difficult for anybody to be able to. St- to step up to the pressure, handle it, <clears throat> kind of give give up a little bit of their autonomy getting mm-hmm. signed and then possibly not being satisfied with the outcome and then still coming after that, having, you know what I mean, and, and delivering with a, a good project. So I kudos to her for being able to do that. Yeah, I mean, you you get to a point where you're like running a corporation of you, you know? Mm-hmm. Because you have so much to manage and think about, um, and you're not you're not connected with the freedom it is to make this music, um, yeah. and she's she's very connected with her mission statement on this. Yeah, um, yeah. Your past life is so dope. Uh, borrowed time, great ending song. It's just yeah. such a cohesive album. Um, yeah, I love her. Yep. Yeah, it's top five of the year without a doubt. Because, like I said, with with ritual and really with with everything in my top five, there's nothing like real bitches don't die. Like nothing from anybody that sounds like this album to me. Um, you can't get that album from anyone else, right? Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you got Jazz Cartier doing the in the strip club with some booty and some wings and. You've got you've got heavy shit, death and um, everything. So it, this gives you kind yeah. of, it really does kind of encapsulate what 
we love about Southern rap, people who love Southern rap. Um, it gives a yeah, lot. Big, big Southern albums will give you all the all in, they're going to give you uh, concept songs and they're going to like give you a bunch of different shit and then they, you won't, you won't veer too much from like a booty shake or just a really smooth, you know, like riding track or something like that. But yep. yeah, like they'll fucking give you like a lot of like thoughts about, you know, different things, you know, what, while giving you stuff you can play at a barbecue and you're like, Oh yeah. shit. All right. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's dope. Um, yeah, it's, I I'm so so happy for it, Carrie Photo have gotten there. Number three is my favorite album of the year. Okay, not, I I don't think it's the best. I just think gotcha. I'm like, why is it on number three? If y'all it, it's not the best. It, it's my favorite. Uh, is gotcha. from whence it came by Young Morpheus. It's like it, my favorite album of the year is always like something that I've just almost irrationally connected to where the music feels like the spirit of the year and the paranoia that is bound within all young Morpheus bars, uh, the quiet whispered paranoia is exactly what 2023 sounded mm -hmm. like for me. Um, so I love this album. It has so much weird shit on it. <laughs> I'm a uh, big, yeah. That's funny that you said that we, we have a, me and my homie, um, we used to have this joke about, we still have a joke about Rock Marciano. Yeah. Like his name is like AKA Calm Threats, where like, yep. he's threaten your life, but he's going to do it in a calm ass fucking like, <laughs> like where you just said whispered, like, like I kill you, but I'm not going to yell. You know what I mean? Like, right. and, uh, he's got like Rock Marciano like esque moments with his raps and rhymes. That's like not a diss. It's not, I mean it in a good way. Like, yeah. Uh, I, I wrote that this is like a hardcore stepper set of an album. Ooh. Like, like, like he even has that lyric in, in um, I feel like it's shattered glass. Maybe mm -hmm. where he said this ain't the shit for the wannabes. It's the master class. Like, yeah. it's very much like you gotta really appreciate. Like, you can listen to it and like be like, oh, this is good. But like, if you really like tapped into like what's going on in this album, like you're going to see that this is like, this is some serious shit. Yeah, no, like, that's a, that's a great point. And I was talking to my buddy about this. Like I said, I love noir movies or whatever, but like my buddy was saying, you can't just put on a noir film for anybody. You have to kind of know how to watch it. Yeah. Like, you might put on devil in a blue dress and they might be bored, you know, very much. Yeah. If you don't know how to watch these kind of movies. So mm -hmm. young Morpheus and appreciating the whisper flow that is going on is, is a lot like that, you know, the, the Boldy James kind of, you know, whisper flow here, but he's, yeah, he's so interesting. Cause and in, this album is paranoid and distrustful um, and dissatisfied with the world and very horny at the same time. <laughs> like it's, it it kind of gives you whatever you need. Like I remember, yeah, I wrote I wrote about my favorite album of the this my favorite album of the year. August Fanon gave an incredible blurb that was very personal and about how he connected to it is amazing. But like I wrote in there, I was like, this was what I was listening to when I was waiting in the outside the doctor's office for my wife to come out, hoping that everything was okay. Like this was the album. Uh, that kept me kind of in that nothing is is okay. You better be on your point thing uh, from whence it came. So I was, and um, shout out to Young Morpheus who shared the review and said it was beautifully in depth. So that's cool. That's what's happening. Um, yeah, I I love this one, but I but you're right. The, if someone who wasn't initiated to the scene was like. Give me something I can listen to. I wouldn't give them this up. Sure, and, and it's and it's not hard on the ears at all. You know, no, because no. you know, That's... like some people, you can't. You're not gonna get them into Arm and Hammer. You're not necessarily gonna get them in the woods, right? You know, because it's, it's like if you know, you know, kind of kind of things, yes. and it has to hit you at a certain time, <laughs> um, in a certain way, you know, and that 
you know, we need artists like that too, you know. Also a long album, 19 songs, mm -hmm. uh, Heavy Bags is, is fantastic. Oh uh, man, experimental, dreamy, it's good yeah. stuff. It, you know, yeah, Layman's Terms by Juni with Juni production. Young Morpheus produces a lot here and it's awesome. Um, but near the cell towers at a minute 33 seconds, man, I can just hear that running in my head. <laughs> um, yeah, this this album's deep within my bones. If you want to know why, go to uh, freemusicempire.com and check it out. Yes. Um, so let's go to two. Two, man. This was a this was a fight for number one, because number two, I adore this album. Why does the earth give us people to love? Uh, by Kara Jackson, and it was it was another funny moment because I was like, "Oh my god!" Like one of my most anticipated albums is coming up. She's like, "Who is it by?" And I'm like, "Kara Jackson." And she's like, "Who is that? What are you talking about?" And I was like, "Well, I was interviewing the, you know." Uh, Dorchester Bully, right? The Y Records, you know, uh, Joshua Virtue and all the gang. And I was digging into their Y Records catalog. They had an album they put out for charity with a bunch of Chicago artists. And Kara Jackson was on it. It was a song called Bed. And I was like, who is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just followed her and was just waiting patiently for years. <laughs> I just never forgot that song. And this album came out, and I was like, "This is everything I wanted you to be." Thank you. Um, yeah, this is fucking. This is tough. This is a. This is one of them ones. It's fire. Again, Chicago. Well, Chicago land. Yep. Brooklyn. Yeah. But, I, I mean, I am not. I am not shy about like my love of Chicago. So, uh, this is, you know, this and this album is just great. Hey, have you heard this one yet? Parts of it, yes. So this to me has the best short songs of the year. Mm. Uh, that first song recognized is just chilling. One minute and two seconds. Um, it actually has a sequel, recognized part reprise, 49 mm. seconds, which <laughs> is very chilling. Um, the last, I think the last song is liquor and it's a minute and 13 seconds like um and it is oof can't buy love so i bought liquor come on that's bars yes yes that's um, bars yeah yeah like even when the i'm glad you made that point like even when it's minimal it's still big you know and, and like her voice is crazy it's deep and rich and like for me, like my thing is like when a when a really good singer can like go in, they kind of slide into out of like in into and out of like minor chords. Ah, that's yeah. my shit. Yeah, and she does it all over the album, and it, it's it really like will it'll almost like jerk you out of your complacency if you start to listen to it. Mm -hmm. You know, just be like, oh, this is dope. I'm just gonna listen to it because it's obviously dope. Yeah, then she'll something and be like oh shit like let me listen harder right you know? right right yeah yeah, I mean, yeah i felt it was like hey you know when you discover a new author and you're just yeah. like i would read any of these books like there's just something yeah. about the way yeah. this person writes that yeah. is just riveting uh kara jackson is riveting uh to me and yeah. dickhead blues is just Come on. It, that reminds me of like a vintage Fiona Apple song with like the bell ring. Yep. It's like in a great, great way. This song like builds and breaks down and builds again. And yeah, it's an amazing track. It's Yeah, that song has, you're right. It has like parts to it. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, it, has, it, it, it swings into different sections. Uh, man, like uh, Pawn Shop is a real kind of like lighter, almost country-ish fun song that is followed by just a lot of hard shit. Like mm -hmm. three is seven minutes. Rat is seven minutes and 53 seconds. That's crazy. The title track is is six minutes and 15 seconds. That, that shit yeah. is 
That reminds me of like a Stevie Wonder song. Stevie Wonder is like my favorite artist of that all time. Makes sense. And like, I hate when people remind me of Stevie Wonder because I'm like, don't you know, don't even try, you know? But the the title track, the Why Does the Earth Get Us Be that, that's that song is so insane. It's it gutted me when I first heard it. I was like, this is nuts. Yeah, so she's you do not think this is, you do not think this is an unworthy number two. No, this is fine at number two. Like like this is like you know on my list. This is on my list. Like there's a like I said a lot of stuff on your list, not a, not a lot, but a good chunk. I would say, at least 20, 20 of your picks would would be could could potentially be on my list. Yep. This is absolutely on my best. Like you know, this is yep. absolutely it belongs. This is great. Yeah, it definitely is the power like of folk as a medium. Right. If you're right. Like, yeah. This is a, again a folk album, but you know, it goes a lot of different places. It goes a lot of different places, and it's yeah. This is what folk can do, and it can really open open up to where people are listening to what you're saying. Uh, sure. Move your bars. Um, number one, and I had do. I swear, I had no idea this is going to be number one when this came out. I was not into it. <laughs> I was Maps by Billy Woods and Kenny Siegel. When it came out, I was like, I don't know, man. Some of this shit is about like setting up speakers on tour. Like, I don't know what am I going to do with this, you know? Um, yeah, it was just it was just so different. Everything about it was so different. But and and this is what I love about being a fan of Woods is he's never going to give me what I what I'm anticipating. Right, it's like best to not even fucking have an expectation with yes. dude. Mm -hmm. One day I'll get there. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta just kind of be like, whatever it is, just give it to me, man. I'm gonna get into it. But at the but over time, it's so interesting and so unique. And like, I was in the RMPP chat, and I was like the Rohan chat, and I was like, some days I just love maps way more than test strips. And they were like, yeah, we, I do too. Like, it was like that album maps has a real heart to it. Yeah. Like, it has a real heart to where he's like thinking about his kid and think about the life his kid's going to have. Uh, it's, it's just, and you know, so, like what I was at a party. That's right. My wife's a uh, party for a job or holiday party and people were finding out that I did the free music empire thing. And they were like, give me one song, man. Give me one song to listen to. Uh, and drunk. And I was like, New York city tap. Yes. Bingo. New York city tap water. I said, ah, uh, greatest lyricist in the world, stroking his cat in his apartment. Like <laughs> you just never hear that shit. You never hear. This is a guy who was like explaining colonialism to us. And now he's he's in his apartment stroking his cat, being like, is that the same homeless guy? Or did that guy die? The, you know? the imagery, yeah. It's crazy. Phenomenal. As that's one of my favorite, that's one of my favorite songs of the year, of the entire yeah. year, too. 100 percent Yeah, that's yeah. I think um as a touring artist who has come home and felt extremely displaced. Yep. And lost, but understanding that like like shit's good, right? Like shit's good. You know, yeah. he's very yeah. much he very much like captures that sentiment and feeling in a way that like I don't know, I find it very I, I love um I love Woods because he's able to like again like make so much beauty out of the mundane. Yep. For the perceived mundane. Um there's something very poetic and beautiful about being able to do that at a high level. Um uh, yeah. So I, I get it. it. Yeah. I don't know if maps would be my number one, but yeah. I understand why it is here. Yeah, I mean and, and the weird the other weird thing, Kay, like one of the things people didn't like when maps came out was that soft landing is a very pop song. Like that is the most pop. He has oh, come on. These but, fans need to cut it out, man. 
<laughs> What's wrong with people? I, I, to me, Soft Landing connected me to the album even more because I was like, that's what's interesting about this is that like we have jazz interludes where he wraps his face off. We have this pop song. We have Year Zero where he's going nuts with Danny Brown. Like we, this album feels like so many albums. Um, a lot. It's a lot. But Soft Landing kept me coming back being like, I got to figure what this is. Like, uh, I was just really, and I love it. I, it's It's unique uh it's it's very unique and you know there's definitely people being like this is better than hiding places i don't i don't think it is for me hiding places was a real real moment uh and it's hiding places is that like dark underbelly album full of songs he won't even play you know like red dust he won't play that live um that album means a lot to me, but this is a, a beautiful uh, continuation of their world, right? Because like, you don't want a sequel that does what the original does. You want to come back and do something new. And this is new. So I love that he gave people, that's why Billy Woods has the kind of catalog people can argue over. Yeah, that's great. Right. A lot of people because never- they're all, they're all complete thoughts and they're all different. Yep. Yeah. And some artists just can't do that. No. You know, he's he's phenomenal and I'm glad that hip hop has him. Yes. And, you know, because he's one of those like uh buzz, you know, buzz names now, but this is after so much, so many years of so many years, yeah. Obscurity and like people not knowing, but then like, you know, now people are really like waking up and it was very mm -hmm. grassroots. So it's, it's just beautiful to see. It's like very much I want. I I don't like saying that like any East Coast anybody is carrying the torch or you know right because it's like the shit never goes away you know it's just we have some better some years better than others and this was I again. think he is inspiring people like like we talked to so many rappers K who are, who were like I study Billy Woods raps like <laughs> when I want to figure out how to do new stuff you know like. It, he he inspires people to innovate personally, right? Mm -hmm. And that that's kind of, that's amazing, right? That's that's a big level. So, yeah, he's able to be right. risky without being flashy, right? It's, that's not that's not easy. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's he's fantastic, and this album really kicks him up a, a bunch of notches because. He he just keeps doing things that he hasn't done before, and if you keep doing that, that's pretty impressive. Like, it's, uh, I mean, it's 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 he's producing a lot of work, and it, and it's all high quality as well. Yeah, I mean, which is phenomenal. You know, mm -hmm. that is my album of the year. Uh, quick recommendations. Did it? You did it. Let's do some quick yeah. recommendations. Did it? We got through it. Um, so I would say. I was listening to Rodrigo and then I really enjoyed the jelly roll CMA speech. You people yes. should find on YouTube. Uh, so I listened to uh wit sit chapel. Okay. The album he put out this year. I think it's, I think it's, it's very interesting. Like, cause he uses very conventional country like format to talk about the prison system and drug addiction in ways that I'm like, you're sneaking hip hop shit into this. Like Jelly Roll's a hip hop dude. Like he was in hip hop. Hey, he's a hip hop artist, you know, yeah. he's crossing but, up. but he's figured out like, if I make the song sound like this, I could talk about what I want. Yeah. So that's a real interesting album to listen to from that perspective and go, oh shit, this is about fentanyl. Figured it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Figured it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I find that shit fascinating. Um, but yeah, my wife finds some of it fascinating. Um my the second recommendation, oof, this is a talented individual. Um, uh, 
Jesus Light Skin Superstar is the name of the album. And it's by Let the Dirt Say Amen. Okay. Let the Dirt Say Amen from DC put out an incredible oh. album a few years ago called God Hates Gucci, which is just amazing. Uh, he put out a bunch of beat tapes since then because he's a producer as well. And I'm like, that's awesome, but I really want you to rap again. And he finally put out an EP and oh, it has moments. Okay. Where, like, I get everything I want. Um, oh, what a talented individual. Jazz men, Buddy Bailey. Oh, he's, yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. I want a full length still. Uh, stop teasing me, I guess, is what I would tell him. Um, yeah. Those are the big two that I will I will rep for. Yeah. So good deal. Any uh recommendations, Sam, from, from your list? Hit us. Uh Janelle Monet, The Age of Pleasure. Yeah. Great album. I like the Doja Cat. She's problematic as fuck. We love Doja. Really good rap album. Yep, that was a really good album. I, I uh, Fly Anakin, the Skinamax sides A and B. I fuck with that very hardcore. Um, Key Glock, I love me some Key Glock. Glaucoma two. Fun. Key yeah. Glock and Baby Tron are fun. Yeah, those are like fun. Interviews. Uh, keeping it on Michigan, I was fucking with that PZ earlier. Ghetto, that's mm -hmm. a good album. Yep. Now uh, the, the funny thing about Skinamax, by the way. Yeah. I, I listened to side A and I didn't get it. And then when I got I, I guess side A and B, I was like, oh, I understand. Like it came together better for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fly Anakin's so consistent. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Good deal. The uh K recommendations. So I mean I went I went back to uh Daniel Caesar Caesar Never Enough. Never enough. Uh, I I listened to that again for the first time in a, a couple months, and that that's one of my uh, I, when I when I listen back to it, it reminds me of how good it good it was. It actually was. It just came along. I don't remember what other. I think there were like that was like a really loaded time of the year. Yeah, I think it got buried. I it got, yeah, I think it just got overshadowed. Yeah, but it's a really really solid album. Yeah. Daniel Cesar, shout out. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, that's a good one. The, um, yeah, we're going to be, shout out to all my, uh, all my One Piece people. I'm chiseling away at One Piece, one episode at a time. The, um, the old anime shit, not the live action. I'm, I'm chiseling away. Okay. At the, it's like 53 episodes a season, you know? Uh, so I'm like midway through the first season. Uh, it's, it's been weird. It's been a good time, but it's, I never see, I, there's in anime, there's like young women with huge boobs and then there's old ladies, but there's no middle-aged women <laughs> in anime. If you know anime and I, by design, it's by design. If you know anime and I'm talking out of my butt, hit me with some good middle-aged women, <laughs> the fried green tomatoes of anime. You know what I mean? Give me that. We'll see. But yeah, I appreciate all the love for 2023. Um, it's been it's been incredible. Like, Kay, I was talking about like I've always when we started this thing, I never I just kind of put my stuff out there and wanted to be of service, but I wasn't now I have diehards. I have people that are like, I love your shit. And I'm like, wow, that's weird. You know, um, it's it's awesome. All good. Even when it feels strange, it's all good. We have people who rep for us, and um, it's it's amazing. So thank you for everybody joining the Patreon, subscribing, uh, listening, spreading the word. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tell a friend. And follow Psalm 1 on all available social media. Um, she is not as anti-medicine as Pete Rock. Uh, which is nice. Not, not as much, no. 
uh, yeah. So it's it's good. Yeah. It's not like following Kevin Gates or anything. You're not going to get that kind of content. Not as horny. <laughs> not as horny. Half oh, as no. horny as Kevin Gates. Half as horny as Kevin Gates. That's a t-shirt. That's yeah, right? a on one t-shirt. I like still that. very horny, right? But you know. horny. It's still a good portion. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but uh thanks for always supporting me thanks for asking me to do this again like uh as kind of a newer freelance journalist it it was a good exercise to oh man and also like uh just keeping me abreast on new shit and reminding me how much i love music and i appreciate your words and yeah yeah, appreciate what you guys are doing and the show and just keep doing it and I'll, i'll be on any time that's that's amazing to hear. Awesome. Um, yeah, I sent you the invoice. You know, no biggie. <laughs> <laughs> You've meant a lot to me, um, and you know, I remember being like, I want to talk to someone to let her know that I always believed her. Um, and so that's <laughs> believe that's- me about what? What exactly? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Believe me, anything I say, believe I always me. Believed, I always believed someone, so I'm with you, and and I appreciate you. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's good stuff. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you all. What will tomorrow bring?